Hello, 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 hello. It is Thursday. It is Thursday. Another day, another stream, as always. And today we're going to do what we haven't done for one week, let's say, <laughs> or let's say two weeks. We're going to do another community feedback session or personal feedback session. That's what I like to call them. Um, today we're going to go over the new submitted pieces. So there are actually quite a few. So um, we got to be a little bit quicker today um, so that we have as much time as possible to go through all of them. Um, of course, before we before we go into that, we're going to go to the 30 minute quick sketch and then we're going to go straight back to do the feedback session. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really too much to say. <laughs> if you want to see only one of these topics, you should find timestamps in the description. If they're not there yet, then you're too early. OK, <laughs> you're too quick. Come back later if you need those. <laughs> OK, yeah, I mean, that's basically everything. Let's get straight into Blender and create the quick sketch for today. There it is. There it is. You can see what we're going to sculpt today. Um, this this friend here, the snake dragon thingy. Um, like yesterday, we actually created this one. It was, uh, was pretty cool. I think the end result looked pretty cool. So today we're going to do this one. Um, I think this one is out of all these ones, sort of the coolest and most unique looking one. So we're going to do this one. Yeah, basically, you know. Oh, hold on. Screencast keys. There you go. Perfect. Uh, I think I need to press N. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're ready to go. Let's uh, get the right into it so we can get straight into the personal feedback session. Grab the pen. Where's my timer? There it is. Anything else? I think we are ready. So I would say we can begin in three, two, wait, three, two, one, go. Perfect. Okay, yeah, today it's going to be the last day actually that we're going to, or that I'm going to stream. Uh, the next stream will be on the 3rd of January. I'm going to spend the time between that, uh, between now and then, to, I guess, finish most of my plans that I have for this year. And then we're going to get straight back into, uh, into it at the beginning of the next year. And then in end of the end of January also, uh, I guess, finishes or completes the first year of, I guess you could say, content creation for me. I think I actually did. Yeah, I, I started streaming before I started um, uploading YouTube videos. Well, because generally I, you know, use my YouTube video. I mean, my streams as footage for the YouTube videos and as projects or ideas so that, you know, I don't, I don't really, there are like a few um, projects that I've done fully off stream, but not that many. Um, so yeah, you know, I kind of have to, kind of had to begin streaming before I could upload a new video. But yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how this year turned out so far. Next year is going to be even better as always. <laughs> the usual thing to say <clears throat> but i think if you if you keep doing something it doesn't really matter what you do um if you keep doing that thing it's i think the the, the next year um is always going to be better uh, maybe not you know always but um i think most of the time that's true it's just such a it's, it, it's such a overused term at this point <laughs> that it you know that it doesn't really hold that much weight anymore or maybe that's just me maybe no maybe maybe that is just me
Yesterday we did the uh, mental steps or we finished the mental steps of sculpting, uh, I guess, project. It was a quick, quick overview of how I create my characters. So this one, for example, what I think about and how I do it. A uh, few technical things, more mentally though, sort of explaining what I think about while I'm sculpting. And um, yeah, basically going through the process of creating a character, not only like a low quality, I guess, or low res character like this one will be. But actually like a full-on uh character with with i guess you know a, a lot of depth or a lot of uh a lot of let's say resolution welcome back kudu or kudu <laughs> hope you enjoyed your uh your thursday hope you enjoyed your day welcome back First one, as always, are you the person that, uh, are you the person that always gets to school or gets to the class after, after the break, before this, before the class even begins? <laughs> or, or were you somebody that always came in right when it started? I think that was more me, or maybe it sort of depended always on where we were, or what we were doing. Also, welcome back. Uh, Kuru Denshi Sama. <laughs> what if I don't even leave class? Oh, true, those people exist too. <laughs> so you're one of those. <laughs> I think in the later years we we um we switched classrooms pretty often, so we couldn't really just stay in one. But if then I think we actually yeah I think we were also like the ones that just stayed in there because like it's just you know we're chill to just especially if it's cold you know just stay in the class i think it was actually not allowed but then if we if we could if we if we saw the opportunity we try you know we uh we use it and we used it and stayed in the classroom <clears throat> but i think generally it wasn't allowed because like i think like there always have to has to be a teacher to kind of you know oversee everything and if that's not the case then i don't know we're gonna get sued i don't know <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm similar then. <laughs> always sticking, staying in class was always the best. Because why would you move if you didn't have to? I kind of want to give him more of an edgy look, not in, in terms of like the the well edgy in the sense that it's gonna be have more sharp edges like the, the chin right here for example with these sharp um i guess you could say horns and then um also the the what is it called the overall just like the the, the structure of his face I'm gonna make it more sh like sharper and with more sharp edges i think that'll look better Fitting, more fitting to what we're what this character looks like at least in the sketch there you go look at him of course the the horns also kind of contribute to that look being very sharp and very uh edgy let's say <laughs> it's kind of a weird word to say in that in that way let's make the head a little bit slimmer here there you go Perfect. Gonna be interesting, uh, this feedback session, just because there are so, like, more people, like, usually only, like, one person submits more than one piece, um, and this time I think there were, like, three or four, uh, yeah, I think, like, three people that submitted more than one, and what I usually do is when you submit more, then I split the time that I, you know, I guess, allocate to everyone um, or to each one um, I guess I split it up you know so that if you submit two and we have 40 minutes 14 minutes to go through your uh, pieces then you have 40 minutes for both kind of like a, I guess uh, like a, like a, um, I don't know what to call it like a 
Oh, there, there was a ward. I can't really remember what it is. Like you have to to um, make sacrifice. So either you can you can hear a lot of criticism for one, or just a few things here and there for all three, for example. I kind of uh, I'm 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 um, thinking about maybe changing it up a little bit so that it's a little bit more strict, maybe, or maybe setting like a limit as to how many you can submit. Um, maybe three is the maximum because uh, you know. Usually we have seven, like 17 minutes generally to talk about a, a certain person. And if it's like four, four pieces, then I, you know, switching the switching the piece and then getting ready to, to talk about the new one takes a little bit of time. And I think it's kind of like a, at three pieces, I kind of, I think I kind of reached the limit. Um, but so far, nobody has submitted four. So <laughs> I'll just leave it open for now. I don't even know if somebody ever submitted three, actually. Maybe. I think two was usually the, the max so far. Okay, we just need a neck. This is supposed to be like some sort of dragon piece or dragon creature. So I kind of want to make sure that it has these, this long neck, this sort of um, snake leg, snake leg, snake neck. Let's see if we can give it a more distinct structure here. Maybe two muscles here up top and then one on the side, on each side, and then maybe down at the bottom one more. So we have one right here carrying the most weight, I guess. And then we have one on the side here. Maybe a little bit wider. And then we have the bottom part right here. We can maybe separate these pieces a little bit more or these, these parts. And then there you go. Look at that. Let's see what it looks like. I think that gives it a more interesting structure than just it being round. <laughs> so I kind of want to keep it. Maybe we can even make it a little bit edgy too by making the edges between the muscles a little bit more distinct right here for example look at that yeah that's cool there you go something uh interesting happened today <laughs> of course i have um i have a uh, on youtube um i have a like I guess main channel, then I have a live channel, and then I also have a channel just for my privacy, private use, I guess you could say. Um, just so I don't, I don't know, mix mix these two up. Uh, that's also that's also the one that I've been using for the last year, or not years, even more, like five years or so. Um, so I didn't want to just reuse that one or repurpose it. So I made a new one. So which means. Um, what happened today is that I actually got re recommended a video of myself for my private, <laughs> on my private channel or private account, which was pretty interesting. I was like, wait, am I on my own page? Nope. <laughs> I just got it recommended to myself, which was pretty interesting. I actually watched it just to kind of see what, like, you know, what it, um, uh, just kind of rewatch it and see, you know, what I could do better. <clears throat> and, um. Yeah, it actually, so the thing that, that I noticed in that video, it was the, the one with retopology, explaining retopology. The one that I noticed there, which I actually, um, well, what I, where I pay, t pay a lot of attention to now is the fact that I, that you can hear a lot of mouth noises in that video. <laughs> now that I said it, I probably ruined the video for everyone, but uh, everyone hearing this, but um, you can very much hear it. I think because I, when I usually record, I'm pretty much a little bit closer to the mic and also I speak right into it. So, so it picks up all the small noises a little bit better, which, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to find better ways to, I guess, avoid that, which is interesting because when I stream, you don't really hear it that much. So I think I kind of want to, I guess, adopt a more stream like, I don't know, <laughs> um, way of explaining or no like recording vocals 
So um, I'm gonna you know sit. I think what I did before is I kind of talked directly into the mic, um, in my recordings, and now I kind of want to try something more like this, where the mic's like next to me. It's actually not in front of me. It might might look that way, you know, but it's actually not in front of me. Um, maybe that works a little a little bit better. But that is that was like the video where I kind of noticed that that was the case. Actually, somebody uh, commented. <laughs> somebody commented the same under the video like oh you know i think for some people it's kind of hard to hear like mouth noises and all that so they said like oh i like the video but it's kind of hard to listen to because they because of all the mouth noise and i was like yeah i know <laughs> like i replied i know i'm sorry <laughs> So now I, now I kind of try to minimize that as much as possible. Maybe now I notice it more than I uh, than I should, because you know once you know that something exists, you will notice it more and more and more. So if you think about like a word that you that you think you've never heard before, uh, and then you hear it everywhere, everywhere being used, you know that sort of thing. But once you kind of know that it exists, you kind of more aware of it, <clears throat> and. Um, I think that's sort of what might happen, like what has somewhat happened to me, where I always listen, I even listen for mouth noises in other people's videos, just to kind of see if I can pick up any like techniques or whatever to kind of copy um, to reduce the mouth noise. I think overall it's just, just I guess, something personal, like some people have like a lisp, some people have more a wetter mouth or whatever. <laughs> And um, just something you kind of have to find a good way to deal with. <clears throat> I'm glad that I, that 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 is not the case for uh, the stream because that would be way more frustrating to get rid of. Or, well, it was hard for me to find a good res uh, solution for it because, um, like, I tried everything, like drinking more water, um, eating something beforehand, like everything that that I kind of heard of that might work <clears throat> um from videos and then um i i, I was kind of glad that i actually have like a source of a solution like the stream where i didn't hear it as much or basically at all um compared to the videos or the recordings so um i, I had i have at least something that i can compare compare it to and kind of like a like an end goal i guess I don't really mind the mouth noises too much. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. The thing that always sort of jumps into my mind, or the one that I notice a lot, are the noises that, that are being made by when you pour water into a cup, for example. Like, I don't know why, but that, that always catches my attention for some reason. I always think, like, when I hear that, oh, there it is again, there it is. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like trigger word it's not that i hate it necessarily it's just such a such a weird such a weird sound that i can't get out of my head every time i hear it it's just so weird it's like oh there it is again <laughs> let's add the ears oh the ears are actually Oh, they're facing backwards, okay. There you go. That looks pretty good, at least from the front already. We have uh, 30 minutes left, so we can actually detail this out quite a lot. So let's do that. Let's do the overall shape first, as we discussed yesterday. First, we go over the uh, the silhouette, and then we can refine the part that is inside of the silhouette. There you go. Make the silhouette readable, and then go into the inner details. 
but that's probably also going to be a video. I'm probably not going to upload the whole thing just as a sort of, uh, you know, a, um, I'm probably going to edit it down to the most essential stuff just because, um, well, I think that's going to be more suitable for the, for the main channel rather than uploading the, the stream stuff again. I'm probably just going to mention the stream or the, the recording, the VOD, so if anybody wants to see it again in full length with all the <laughs> with all the boring in between, <laughs> um, then, you know, they can still watch it. That's why I actually separated the, the two, live and video. Some people might do it differently where they stream and upload videos on the same, the same channel. But I think what they do usually is they, <clears throat> they stream and then they unlist the video so that there's like you know that, that, that you can only see the video on your on that channel that you can only see the um like the videos that get uploaded on the you know on the list of videos i guess you could say because otherwise like after the stream is done it's just going to be displayed as videos um on your channel so what they usually do is they either have like a VOD channel where they upload it or they just don't upload it at all, I guess, and make videos out of it. <clears throat> I actually considered just streaming on both on the main and live channel. And then I use the live channel more like a sort of, you know, VOD channel for well, that. Yeah, I, I haven't really figured out how to do that yet. Um, the, 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 the service that I use can do that, but I need a credit card to do that. And credit cards aren't that common in Germany. <laughs> so I would have to get one first before I could do that. I wouldn't be against it necessarily, but um, it's just something that I, you know, I have so, you know, I have, I have stuff that I want to get done. And, you know, if that's just like an optional thing, maybe at some point I'll consider it. But right now, I don't think about it. Look at him. Perfect. He kind of reminds me of... Um, the gargoyle in dark souls the the two guys <laughs> i don't know why kind of looks similar <clears throat> these these guys or the two were actually fairly simple at least for me um in in dark souls i remember <laughs> i think i made i think i um i played dark souls not not on easy mode necessarily but with a fairly simple weapon most of the game i, I played with a lance Lances seem to be pretty pretty good because they have a certain range so that you can stun enemies or at least keep them away from you without them you know being able to hit you which uh, you know <laughs> is quite convenient in Dark Souls and um, they actually did a lot of damage so it's like it's they were really really useful they seem kind of um, they seem to make the game more easy than like watching other people do the same bosses for example. It seems a little bit harder for them than for me. Somebody just followed on Twitch. Oh no, hold on. Let me see who it was. You're not getting out of this, out of, or without me saying your name. Top of Kachina, maybe? Top of Kachina, welcome. If you're still here, hope you enjoyed the stream. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. And yo, I also hope you enjoy. Enjoy your Thursday. Yeah. Dark Souls, um, I haven't, have I played through the last one? I think I played a little bit more recently, but I, I don't think I finished it. Did I? I can't remember where I stopped. I went, hmm. The only thing that I remember, the last thing that I remember was the, um, the, um, library. With all the witches. I can't remember what, what comes afterwards. Or what the oh yeah I find I finished it yeah I remember now um, wasn't the the final boss I think was the uh, the super acrobatic um, what is it like Lord of Cinder with this black sun in the background yeah, yeah, yeah I remember I haven't done the DLC characters though or DLC bosses I think they're supposed to be harder than all the rest.
Looking very suspicious there. <laughs> Let's add some more volume to the eyes because otherwise they look kind of weird. There you go, that's better. Okay, let's make them rounder so they look more open and more insane, let's say. Wild, I think that's a better word for this. There you go, look at him. Okay. Let's give the pieces down here some more detail. Yeah, I haven't played Dark Souls 2 just because I, I skipped it basically because from what I heard, it's pretty like bad it's not bad necessarily but it's it's worse than the others it has some sort of like bad mechanics or bad enemy placement that can be quite frustrating so i just said well might as well just skip that one and go straight to three and then i played three i actually um i think i played through the whole game with the katana which was slightly like somewhat boring because i only used the same <laughs> the same weapon the whole time but it was also pretty pretty fun to just go through the entire game with the same weapon. Basically, the one that you get from the um, the dude with the sort of broken or ripped robe in the beginning of the game before you get to the the the, the fire keep or fire keeper, the um, the dude that's standing in front of the tower door <laughs> with his katana. I remember last time I played it. I think I just skipped that one I, I i fought him before and then i i lost um but in my second playthrough i said no i'm gonna kill this dude and then i'm just gonna use his weapon to finish the game if i can and then i actually did pretty funny these games i think have somewhat of a uh, replay value in the way that where you can like have different classes and whatnot but it doesn't really seem that tempting to me other games are more interesting in that sense for me but Dark Souls doesn't really feel that way. It feels to me like if you've beaten the boss once, you've kind of done it. Um, but I can also see how you can like it to always, you know, test different builds or whatever against all the bosses and see if you can beat them. <clears throat> Give him that second set of teeth there you go looking hot looking sharp let's say i think that's a better word for it there you go let's detail this lips a little bit more or his mouth just kind of giving it a more rough look by adding some bumps right here you can see we kind of get to the limit of the resolution, but I'm not going to increase it because that would... Oh, wait. Okay, we have four minutes left. I thought we were already over. That would just tank my time. I'm not going to go over everything again with 50 resolutions, so I'm just going to stick with what we have. There you go. Put that in there. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. Let's give this edge here some more love. Fitting music for that. <laughs> we should maybe even give him uh, no a nose. I don't really know. I don't, it doesn't seem like it has one, but I kind of want to give him one. Oh, so let's add it right here. Right there. Yes. Perfect. Look at that. Doesn't have to be big. Look at that. Perfect. Let's go to the horns. They look pretty rough or pretty smooth. They should look pretty rough, but they don't. There you go. Okay. That's talking pretty good. He, he looks like he's smiling. <laughs> he's not supposed to be smiling. He's supposed to look mean. Wait. Let's change that real quick. Need to pull this down to make him look angry. There you go. Look at him. Now he's angry. 
Why did you change my eyebrow? No tongue? No, he says, oh, true. Oh, hold on. Good. Yeah, thank you for the... Thank you for that. I actually forgot. I thought, well, his mouth is close, you know, so why why would he has a, he have a tongue? But of course, he does. Welcome back, Memer. Memer's heaven. Cute dragon, thank you. He's not cute, okay? He's supposed to look mean. Don't insult him, okay? He's trying. <laughs> He's trying to look mean. Uh, there you go. Save it. Perfect. Okay, let's add a tongue. Set it invert, and then we're going to use the snake hook with... Uh, magnify 0.6 maybe to keep the volume. Doesn't need to be that long, but it still needs to be... Well... Oh... We need to remove symmetry. There you go. Ooh. Look at that. Let's bring it closer to the body because I kind of want to keep everything in the frame. That's better. And let's add these small swivels at the end. I think it has three. So here's the second one. Look at that. And then one more. There you go. Okay. Look at that. He's... <laughs> Looks kind of weird, but I guess it is how it is. 30... What? 30, 53 seconds. Okay. There you go. That's pretty good. Um, here we can probably refine the eyebrow a little bit, or whatever that's supposed to be. Make it look meaner. There you go. And then maybe go in here too. Okay. I think that's about it that we can do here. Looks pretty good, actually. I like the uh, the outcome. <laughs> the outcome of my actions. I like them. Okay, perfect. We have 12 seconds. Let's use those to save. I think we don't need to do much more. One of the few that we finished before the time is over. Let's get the line project. Just cut it off right here. There you go. One hour scoped. Nope. This is the 30 minute scoped. Just as a warm up. A quick sketch, basically. Finish the edge and then we're ready. Okay. Save it and we're good. Perfect. No, we don't need this light. Let's go and add our lighting scene. Before we do that, let's frame the dragon. It actually, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Fit it more into the frame. There you go. I don't know if I actually changed the size, but it looks like it. Should we place it above or below? Maybe even on the same level. I like the, the framing of this. It has a nice sort of flow to it. Maybe... I kind of want to see the eye still. So maybe that's a good one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Maybe we can even add some rotation here into the camera. There you go. Make it more dynamic. Perfect. Okay. Next up, lighting. Depend. Of course, let's grab an old one. Collection. Light. Okay. Wait, there you go. Pretty good for 30 minutes. Well, I think after almost a year, well, at least half a year of sculpting <laughs> 30 minute quick sketches at some point, I think, you know, you reach a certain level of speed and uh, outcome, whatever. That's a cool shadow. 
let's grab this one to make it just slightly smoother. There you go. And then one more for the color. Oh, what color should it be? What would be what would be cool? Maybe yellow? That could be cool, like a lightning dragon. Like that. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay. We need one more thing, which is first of all I'm gonna decrease the background color or brightness. There you go. Oh, we need two things. First one, depth of field. Maybe we can put it on the eye right here, right there. Make it maybe depth of field of 0.4 is usually what I use. I think that's pretty good here. Pretty good. <laughs> we can see the, the tongue is quite blurry, but I think that looks pretty cool because now the focus is set on his eye and then we need an eye actually. It doesn't have one yet. There you go. Median, smooth, and mirror. There you go. I actually, hmm, should we make his eyes glowy? Let's see what that looks like. First of all, let me grab the light here so I can see the color. Then I can, oh, wait, okay. Let's just copy the color and copy it, copy it into the eyes. Maybe the eyes could be white. Maybe they could be yellow. Let's see what could look cool. Remove this and then emission. And we add this color. Hmm. I think white will look better. Not black, white. Okay. And then we need to decrease. I mean, we need to add the quick sketch shader. There it is. Perfect. Now, after adding the post-processing glow, it look, should look better. Maybe we should also increase the strength a little bit to make it easier for the glow to work. Mm, good. Five. Yeah, let's keep it on five. Okay. First test render. There it is. 54 milliseconds remaining. <laughs> Perfect. Let's do some post here. Let's see what the glow looks like. Oh, hello. Maybe a little bit too strong. What about uh, six? That's pretty cool. The light, the eyes also look pretty cool. I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. David, 100% resolution and render. Photoshop is already open. Perfect. Okay, perfect. That's it. Let's save it and do some PP. Post processing. Um, we sketch day. What is it? Two. No, three, one, nine. There you go. Perfect. You got that sweet 3090? Nope. I got that sweet 1060. <laughs> Less than half. <laughs> um, yeah, I just used 32 samples. That is, um, I guess, for me, it's enough. Before I, I rendered it at like 265 or so samples, um, but with the improvements for the denoiser, um, it's, you know, I don't really need to use more samples. There you go. Um, yeah, selective color. Hey, oh, hold on. I actually um, have a new filter that I might try, which is the camera raw filter. Let's quick uh, convert this to a smart object. And then we can go to filter camera raw. You're not going to see this. I'm going to show it to you anyway, whether you want it or not. Hold on. There you go. And now we can do some more changes here. So with this one, we have more control over more things than just the uh, 
I guess, you know, the other layers that we have. Uh, what we could do here is, for example, we can change the temperature. I like the blue, actually. If we can add, add some blue there. Make like a mix between yellow and blue. That looks pretty cool. We can also change the exposure, of course. Make it brighter. Contrast. I think the contrast is quite good. You can also, of course, also boost the highlights, make them brighter. But that, I don't think, I don't think that, I don't think that is necessary. Shadows, maybe. Okay, I think that that's pretty good. Then we can also increase the texture or the sort of structure of the image, make it sharper, basically. Uh, clarity does something similar. I think it sort of works more with the luminance, basically the the, the brightness. Dehaze, I don't really use. I don't know exactly what it does. I guess dehazing means if there's some fog in the in, in the um, image, it can remove it, but we don't have any. So we don't need it. And then maybe some vibrance to make it nice and blue. There you go. Perfect. Do we need more? I don't think we do. Color grading. Oh, of course we can change this too. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So here we can do stuff like um, changing the colors for different areas. So the... What is the what do the highlights look like? So if we increase the saturation, you can see we can change the color there too, which can create some really really cool effects. So if you bring this up to maybe a maybe purple, no, blue is too much. So maybe if you if you make the the highlights nice and yellow or orange, like this, and then we go to the shadows and bring that to a nice blue, we can make it this nice sort of stylized look, which can look pretty cool. I think this is also changing these the um the brightness and then we can do the same here okay we can also see before and after so that's after and that's before you can see changes the image quite a bit <laughs> kind of looks like an instagram filter i think that's pretty cool okay perfect dragon doing an insta pose exactly <laughs> Okay. Perfect. Uh, do we need more? No, we don't. That was basically just the extended version of what we usually apply to the um, to the image. Let's save it, and then we're good. Oh. Okay. Save it as a JPEG, as always. There you go okay of course if you want to get you know if you want to create your own version of these i always post them in the discord in the inspiration channel so if you ever wonder why i post them there there are the references for the quick sketches well i always write that there too but i guess maybe somebody doesn't know <laughs> okay Um, we're going to begin the quick, I mean, the, the community feedback session after we're done. I don't know why the timer always restarts. Stop. You violated the law. Cease. Okay, perfect. Yep. We're going to do the <clears throat> personal feedback session after the compilation. We have quite a few to look at. So that's going to be fun. Hmm. Wait. Okay. Yep. Time I want more art. True. <laughs> Just restarting. It's like um like this movie where where the day always restarts. Like, hey, let's do the thirty minute quick sketch. Three, two, one. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, we reached zero. Hey, let's do the thirty minute quick sketch. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, we reached zero. Oh, let's do the thirty minute quick sketch. Just endless loop of the same quick sketch over and over and over again. <clears throat> you need to break the loop by making the perfect quick sketch. Yep, we're going to do the personal feedback session after the uh, compilation. Okay. Which means I'm going to see you in three minutes and then we're going to begin. So I hope you enjoy the compilation. Maybe you've seen it before multiple times. Maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah.
I'll see you in three minutes. Uh, yeah, enjoy. We have arrived at our final destination, which is the, you guessed it, personal feedback session or community feedback session, however you want to call it. We have quite a few submissions. I'm just going to check real quick if there's any more. There's something new. Oh no, hold on. <laughs> there it is. Passion. Um, always submitting in the last second. Didn't pack the texture on the jaw on my back. Can you just remove the link between the image? Okay. Hold on. Let me just quickly grab the last one and then we can begin. Uh, there you go. I suspected there will be one more. So we have seven people that submitted pieces. Will be a full, you know, full packed, <laughs> packed uh, uh, feedback session. Hold on. Um, oh, yeah. Need to download the file real quick. So, okay. Uh, I don't know why, but sometimes if you upload something to Mega, it um, it asks you for a key, like a like a file key or whatever access key, but only if you click on the embedded link, not on the link itself, but the em embed that. Discord did, does themselves. I don't know why, but yeah, it's kind of a uh, weird. So it always com confuses me. Like, oh, is it actually like unaccessible for me because I need the code or whatever? But I don't know. Yeah, usually it isn't, or it wasn't so far. <clears throat> so if you don't want to confuse me, don't use Mega. <laughs> I guess doesn't really, you know, it, it's not it's not bad or something, but it's. It just confuses me for a second. So if you want to save me that second. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you don't have to do anything. I can live with my lost second. Okay. There you go. 
always here watching the evening you sleep. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what I need? Um, you know that the you know the eye emoji where you have like these two eyes just looking in one direction. You should have one where they are closed. <laughs> Because you can, you can, you have an emoji to kind of see like, oh, look at this. But then there should be another one which should be like, don't look at this, you know. <laughs> I don't think that exists, does it? No, they're only open eyes. Is there actually an emoji that, uh, I guess, yeah, there are some, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> we need to do some calculations real quick to see how much time I can give anyone, everyone, not anyone. Um, and then we can begin. <clears throat> so we have seven people and we have roughly what is it uh two and a half so hold on 2.5 times 60 150 divided by what is it seven seven is 21 minutes damn record time <laughs> so we so we have 21 minutes for um each <clears throat> each person and um let's not waste any time and get straight into it we're gonna begin with the first one who would have guessed which is the the one by tracy <clears throat> let me make a new file here there you go okay Where's my, there it is. So Tracy submitted a piece and had a few questions actually, not just to get feedback on, but she asked, or they had a few questions. Let me just put them in here real quick. So that's the first one. And then we have another one, which is this one. And she, they had questions. I don't know why I, why I say she. <laughs> I think because of the profile picture. Okay. <clears throat> so the question, hold on. Let me start the timer actually. Um, there you go, 21 minutes, let's say 20 minutes, so we have a little bit of a buffer where I can like do maintenance in between the, the pieces, 21 minutes, perfect, okay, 20 minutes, go. So, um, Tracy submitted a piece, and, or two pieces, you can see the image right there, the render, that's the one from the front, and then we have one more for the side. Um, they said, the cycle render looks very harsh on the edges of the mask, looking for tips to reduce the noise. So I suspect that the first one, this one, is made in Eevee, and the other one is made in Cycles, it seems like. I think the you can kind of see that with the reflections in the metal cage, you could say. Mm. I think I have a few ideas how you can fix that. Um, I don't remember exactly where... Okay, let's address the, the questions first. Um, let's go through the first one. Um, it's very harsh on the edges. Looking for tips to reduce the noise. So... <clears throat> The harshness of the edges, I think, can be fixed by using, a, not anisotropy, it's called, um, is it anisotropy? No, that's the, the reflection art. Um, there's edge smoothing. It's also in games, I can't remember what it's called. It's, it tries to smooth edges, which can probably help you in these cases. So what, what they mean is how, how you can see like these, this very, very pixelated edge. Um, one, one thing that it could be, or one, one like solution could be to increase the resolution, which then gives these edges more, I guess, pixels to work with. You can see here, <clears throat> it gets pretty pixely on the edge. Maybe if you give it more resolution, you can get a more, I guess you could say, smoother image, or you can get smoother edges. Anti -al -al -yeah, yeah, and anti alias and whatever <laughs> anti aliasing. Um, there is a setting for that in Blender. Let me see where I can find it. Blender and I aliasing. Where is it? Show it to me. Okay, where is it? The button to control aliasing or oversampling or below the rendering button in the render panel. Render panel right here. Rendering right here. No. What was it? Hold on. <clears throat> if below the rendering button in the render panel. Oh, is it up here? No, wait, what? There's no render button. <laughs> um, advanced. I heard it. I've seen it before. 
I've seen it actually. I, I was surprised that I that I saw it. <laughs> um, let's see. Can we see a more specific answer here? Is there anti alias aliasing in Blender? Let's see. Nope. Okay. Can you please tell me where it is? Not just tell me what it is. Change anti aliasing. It's oh, is it in here? In the edit preferences? Let's see. Let's see if it's in here, then we go to render and see if it's there. Um interface display editors, translation, text rendering menus. I don't think it's gonna be in here. Zoom, blind walk, um, interface resolution. Nope. Viewport, is it in here? Gizmo size, HDR preview size, video viewport. There it is. Viewport. Oh, that's viewport. That's what I saw. So here, here you can increase that one just to kind of smooth the edges there. Um, but there has to be one for rendering too. What do you mean? Render next to edit. Oh. Render audio, view, render, view. No. Unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. Let's see. What else do we have here? That's not Blender. Stupid A. Looking for solutions. Rose anti aliasing There it is. Wait, what? Well, how did I read cycles as where is? <laughs> okay, where can I find this setting? Like I shouldn't need anti-aliasing is probably because your lights are very strong. You could try solving this in the compositor. That could work too. Okay. Okay, maybe that's not the, the, the thing that is messing it up. Um, you maybe have image color values that more than 1.0. 1. 1. Then even after anti-aliasing filter, you still have visible squared pixels because after clipping to 1.0, some values stay intact and some change from 100 to 1 and you go to alias. Ideal solution is render to HDR and use some HDR tone mapping with glares. As a workaround, you can try to de decrease lights and change the materials to avoid underbright, overbright pixels at all. So <clears throat> one thing you can try from, you know, this text here, um, is add, so one question that you can answer, you know, <laughs> um, is whether you go into the render settings and you've set your color management to view transform filmic, and then you can maybe even change the look. Um, if that doesn't help or if that doesn't solve it, another thing you can try is you can go into the compositor. So basically, F3 is the Shader editor, if you press F3 again, you can get to the, or shift F3, you can get to the compositor, which looks like this. Here it is. Um, and here you can apply a glare filter. Let's actually do that for the image. Um, we need to open it. Hold on. It's in here. Um, no, it should be in here, right? Let's use input image. Uh, this one, there you go. Put that in there. Then we apply in glare node. We need a viewer and then let's look at the resolution. Should it be in here? No, it's in the viewer node. There it is. I don't use the compositor that much, but probably that doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe it works if you put it in here. There it is. So you can see the glare node doesn't do too much because probably there are not there are no values that are bright enough to be picked up by the glare node so we can decrease the threshold so that even lower i guess um values can be picked up and be used as the glow or be be detected for a glowy surface or whatever so if you put this to 0.1 just going to kind of see if it works you can see it kind of creates this glow effect um so what you could try is you could um set your <clears throat> um you could set your what is it the the color management to filmic filmic i think has the most depth from what i know maybe you can even change the look but the look is more i guess personal it doesn't necessarily change um the contrast or the edges um what you can then also do is you, you can go into the compositor and apply a glare note to just kind of soften the edges like this you can also bring 
if you set it to high for example it's going to be a smaller glow and then you can maybe increase the mix maybe even no the mix doesn't really do much um but <clears throat> um if you decrease the size it might be a little bit stronger yeah you can play around with these settings a little bit and see if you can sort of ease this edge um but this pixelation will stay here the pixelation is basically or it will maybe get easier um, but I think the biggest problem here is that there are no transitionary pixels. So you can see here how we have like this harsh edge from white to black. This is what also they describe in here um, where you have, what is it? You have image color values at more than one. Then even after anti-aliasing further, you still have visible square pixels because, of, because after clipping to one, some values stay intact and some change from 100 to 1. I mean, yeah, to one, and you got aliasing. Um, so it tries to aliasing basically tries to sort of look at the um, the contrast between pixels, and then it it can sometimes like reduce if it, if there are light values that are brighter than one, it reduces them down all the way to one, which then can lead to these very jagged edges. Um, what you can do, which might help, is to increase the resolution. As we said before, that might help. Um, another thing could be to go into the, what is it, render settings in the output settings right here, output properties. And then if you go to output, you can set it from file format PNG, for example, to open EXR. Open EXR R has a bigger color range, which can also help keep the stepping between the light values a little bit more. When you then save it as a PNG, um, that could solve it as well. I think increasing the resolution should also fix pixelation, but it would take much longer to render. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what we could try is we could see what happens if we just put it in Photoshop. <laughs> um, so if we just put that in here, and we can, so you can see here it's still pixelated. What if we just go in here and we just say, uh, let's duplicate. Oh, we can't duplicate it. Um, Where's my, there it is, image size. We can say reserve details, enlargement, and then we can double the size. Oh, hello. Yeah, I know. Okay, close the window, of course, make my life even harder. So we doubled the size. Okay, you can see now we have a smoother edge just because there's some more, more stepping in between the um, the pixels, you can see with this one, we have like one, two, three, four, five different, um, different color values or light values for yours or for the one that you provided <laughs> to, um, it is, it is very harsh. There's like one, two, maybe three. There are not that many. Um, of course this one is still sort of pixelated it looks pretty pixelated just because of the out the input that we gave it you know you can't really make it smooth if there are not no smooth you know edges um but at least you can see you have more i guess you, you have more color range between the pixels if you have more you didn't choose the filter method do you mean in the in here in photoshop or do you mean here wait not here here um no, that's the look, okay. Wait, didn't I? Hold on, let's try it again. So it's back to what it was before. Image size. Oh. There you go. I guess it reset. There you go. Set to two. Okay. Yeah, it didn't really change the look, but you can see you have a little bit more. I guess it preserves the sharp edges. It tries to preserve the sharp edges. <clears throat> So this one might actually look worse <laughs> just because of the, the way that it tries to enlarge it. Um, but I think that might help with the smoothness of the edges. I actually never had that problem before. So, you know, it's always good to find, to kind of share problems and see if we can find resolu I mean, solutions. Let's actually just look for Blender. Um, render has jagged edges and see what we can find. Jagged edges on basic shapes. Let's see what the example is. Doesn't really look jagged to me, but 
who knows <laughs> welcome back zachary hope you enjoyed your thursday hope you're excited for the weekend um the general preference is to, here is to use blend exchange i think it's a combination of anti-aliasing and the very fine angle and sharp contrast which is why even at high quality settings of 301,000 samples in your file, it is still happening. I would suggest that the filter needs adjusting for this sort of scene. Have you tried playing with the render film pixel filter values? I found that 2.0 looks better than 2.5. The best more than that and such. Where can you... Wait, what? Render film pixel filter. Hold on. So we're in the render here. Film? What do, what do we find in film? Exposure, image brightness, okay. Pixel filter, oh, maybe you could try that one too. Um, what does it actually do? <laughs> yeah, um, you can try this. I don't exactly know what it does, but it might help, you know, just trying to list everything that I could find that could help you in this um, problem. Um, and then what was the other one? Pixel, no, that was the one, right? Yeah, pixel filter. So maybe 2 looks better than 2.5. I currently have it at 1.5. Maybe that works for you too. Maybe it's at a different value for you. It's just, it's, It should be the standard value for me. So maybe it isn't. Or you have the exact same value. I don't know. You know, just something you could try. Let's see if there's one more here. Blending blend is good, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You can increase the resolution, okay. Or tweak the pixel width, width in the render settings. Oh, yeah, that the pic pixel filter, okay. Oh, here, here you can see it. Default filter with a better balance between smoothness and detail preservation. And then we have Gaussian smooth filter. Due to limited resolution of images and computer screens, pixel filters are needed to avoid aliasing. This, this is achieved by slightly blurring the images to soften edges. Yeah, so this might actually be a solution that works. Of course, I can try it because, well, <laughs> I would have to have the original file, but yeah, that, that might be something that helps. <clears throat> so if you ever run into the problem that um, you have these jagged edges on your render, so like this one, for example, where you have these very, very sharp and pixelated edges, and you don't really know what you could do. Uh, one thing you could try is you can go to the film settings in the render tab in the properties editor type. No, in the, what is it called? In the properties panel, go to render to the render properties tab, and then go to film. There's a pixel filter tab right here or setting, which you can type, which you can change from Blackman Harris to go Gaussian or box. And then also you can change the width. Maybe playing around with these settings can help you um, reduce the sharpness of the edges. Another thing that might work uh, are, is to increase the resolution for your image. And um, otherwise you could also maybe kind of alleviate that, I guess, sharpness by, by including a glare node. So these are the three that might work. <clears throat> Yeah, I think um, I think that's sort of the the thing that um, that they were asking. So I kind of wanted to focus on that. Oh, reduce the noise. Um, looking to for tips for, to reduce the noise. Um, overall, um, the way you can reduce noise is first of all to increase to include more lights. The more light there is in a scene, the less it needs to calculate the lights. So if, if there's a light that bounces all over the place in a dark scene that takes longer to render than like a light, you know, bright scene. Curious Audi looks pretty bright. Um, so maybe that's not necessarily one thing you could try. Of course, another thing could be, which you I think you already use, is the, a denoiser. Um, reducing noise, I guess the easiest answer would be to just increase the sampling. That always helps, of course. Um, otherwise, what you could also try is um you could you can um adjust the light path settings max bounces that can also help i think that also i think that more helps with the speed but you know maybe it helps for you too 
those are my standard settings i think these ones i've played around with them and um each individual one of them and kind of kind of looked at what looks the best and these settings is what i kind of ended up using so if you want to use those then feel free um they should speed up the the render a little bit um yeah those might be some things you could try to um unnoise your image okay i think i think that's um that's pretty much everything i don't yeah i don't have that many rendering optimization tips because i usually just go with my with the same settings or you can also oh you can also go into the um no way they removed that setting right advanced what is it um where it tries to find more noisy spots to put more samples in. I don't know what it's called, um, but that was a setting in 2.93 that that was called something like that. I think because they changed the whole render infrastructure, they just removed that setting because it's now like part of the oh, like the standard rendering process. Okay, yep. Let's go to the next one. The next one, well, multiple, hold on, are by Zero. Zero submitted four pieces, so we actually have four. Four pieces, 20 minutes divided by four is five minutes. So let's do that. Um, five minutes. The first one is that character with a ponytail, this ninja-like character. There you go. Let's put him into Photoshop, actually. I want to do some adjustments in Photoshop. I think that'll be more useful. Let's see. Photoshop, you know, <laughs> is more helpful in this process or will only sabotage us. I'm going to use um, the this one and then also this one. Okay, we have five minutes to talk about it. There you go. Um, did you say anything in Discord about it? Let's see. That's Ponytail. I did quick for practicing male head. So I guess um, the hair is more, I guess it's something you've done quick, so it's not necessarily something you focus on. So let's more focus on the um, on the head itself, the male head. <clears throat> so one thing I think that you can, um, okay, let, let's go through the things that sort of um, jump out to me immediately. Um, one thing is, he kind of looks like he's cross-eyed. His irises are sort of further in the middle than normal, let's say. So he, he looks like his eyes are pointing both like in the into the middle. So if you're doing like this, I don't know if you can see that, you know, that's basically what he's doing. Um, the general rule to create, I guess you could say, characters that look forward is to place the iris in the middle of the white space of the eye or the eyeball. Um, basically, when you have the eyeball here, that's the big cursor when this is the eyeball right here right here then the eye the iris should be somewhere in the middle of this space here so which would be somewhere over here i would guess so moving these irises a little bit further into the, to the right or no moving either changing the the skin above or changing the eyelids the shape of the eyelids to to bring the iris closer into the middle or moving the eyeball further outwards will will give you that result um you probably have to adjust the eyelids anyway if you change if you move the eyeball but overall um the eyeball um if he's supposed to look straight forward um should be in the middle of the white space of the eye basically yeah, you can do that by changing the eyelids or moving the eyeball itself. <clears throat> okay. Um, another thing that you can... It's, I don't know if, if that's just because of the... Um, because of the HDRI that's you, that you use or it's um, like part of the sculpt. Um, I think one thing you could uh, maybe try and focus on or you could, you know... I guess you know yeah basically trying to focus on could be looking at the planes of the face 
um, if you really focus on practicing those, like the, the bone structure and then the fat structure above above that, or we have the bone structure, then we have the the muscle structure, and then we have the fat on top. If you really practice those, maybe do some exaggerated sculpts even to really practice those different layers, put them on, like sculpt them one after the other. Once you kind of get those down, you can really create some good contrast and good structure in, in like the character's faces. Um, I think right now it looks very smooth the face there isn't really like you can't really see the cheekbone too much this space here is it there's not really like a shadow um there so the thing is you could say well he he might be a little bit more like he has more fat in his face so that's why you don't really see a shadow here but if that's the case then he, the fat the fat right here or uh, over or coming from the nose going down would have more volume which means that there would be a shadow right here so, you know, <laughs> there's always somewhere there, whether you're like have a lot of fat or not, you will always have contrast in your face because of the structure that is being created by how the layers are being set up. Um, so maybe looking at the, looking at the planes, um, the different layers can help you give your characters more structure and more contrast, um, which then you know, makes the characters look more, give them more depth, let's say, basically. Um, another thing that sort of... Um, that you can look at is the profile view of a face. Oftentimes you can see um, there's of course a big difference between, for example, Asian people and Caucasian people in the way that their face is in terms of its depth. Oftentimes Asian people have a flatter face. That's just it's weird. Like it's it sounds weird, but that's just how I how I like like how I how to say it. Um, one thing you could try is to just kind of move the nose, for example, a little bit further forward. Maybe also reduce the the size of the tip just a little bit to make it a little bit more, I guess, or not not necessarily the size, could make it more distinct by giving making the nose tip a little bit sharper, for example. So we can do this here, and then we can maybe even, oh, sorry. We can maybe even just pull it forward just a little bit of course it gets blurry because i don't use the liquify tool <laughs> um but just moving it forward a little bit can give it some more depth even in the side view so maybe it can help when you study the male characters um i don't know what references you use of course but uh, maybe to look at the overall profile of the side view a little bit and see what the sort of proportions are not only in terms of the nose length for example but also how far they go forward what I like to use to compare or how I like to gauge the sort of distance between or how far the nose goes forward or is like further forward than the eyes, for example, is I like to look at the nostril here and I like to look, look at the distance from this nostril, the end of the nostril, basically to the beginning of the eyelid right here. The distance from here to here is basically how I kind of determine how far forward the nose is. Uh, maybe if you look at this, for example, you can kind of see how far you need to go with your nose length, I guess. <laughs> There's a very, very common way to draw animes, anime characters from the side, which looks like you have the forehead here, and then you have like the forehead ending, then we have the nose. And then to begin the sketch, oftentimes people, what they do is they do something, okay. They do something like, wait, like this. That is a pretty common way to begin sculpting like the profile view or not sculpting drawing the profile view of like a character because then you can basically say well the nose is right here so it goes like this and then we have the lips which are right here there you go and then we have the we have the uh the chin so you have everything in the shape maybe looking at the shape and how it's sort of how you can see it in every character can help you kind of see how far forward you can go with your nose for example okay the next one is this one. We have a body. Let's go to the body. There you go. So this one is actually a different body style, let's say, than um, what he previously submitted. Seems like to have more weight or pregnant, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to judge. <laughs> but um, we have a more, I guess you could say, female body. Um, and... We have, uh, you know, a little bit more weight. One thing that kind of jumps out to me right now is the right here, this spot. Um, the hips are pretty wide here. 
Generally speaking, the hips, um, well, they're wider at the bottom. But what you usually have is you have one very distinct line that goes from here upwards and then to the back. And this line right there is the most visible part of the bone of the hip. So there's like a, like a, if you touch on your hips, basically right, I guess, like if you have the, if you have your abs right here, you have them split up into multiple pieces or multiple parts, of course, multiple muscles. And the one that is down here, like the big one down there, if you go right next to it, there's like this, this hard spot right over here. That is basically your hip bone. The one that is protruding the most out of your body, I guess you could say. Um, and that is also the muscle that you can see the most from the hip. Um, what really makes up the the width of the hips is not necessarily the the bone, but more the muscle and the fat on top of the bone. Um, so if you have your hips somewhere, I don't actually know what the shape looks like from the front. But generally speaking, you have your you have your bone right here, your your femur, which then goes down all the way to here. And then you have your muscles on top. The muscles create the volume, which means that um, if your hip end somewhere like this, um, what then what then follows is muscle connecting to the hip and then going down, getting wider and then getting thinner again. This creates the widest part of the legs. And that is also not on hip on the hip height, but some a little bit lower. Um, and then, of course, on top of the the muscles which you have here, you also have the um, the the fat. So if you have fat, that's also even that makes the hips even wider. But you don't, you usually don't have the widest part of your hips up here, but you have them somewhere more in this region. If you look at the echo shade that I have here, my real life echo shade Roberto, look at him. You can see. Hold on, that's going to be difficult again. Well, uh, hold on. <laughs> there you go you can see the hip here's the bone or the hip itself right there you can see the bone protruding and then right here is the widest part this is the muscle that gives the leg its volume or its width it connects to the hip right here and then it gets wide right here and then if you would have fat this one doesn't have fat of course it's an echo shade so you can see the muscles if there's fat on top, the hips would be even wider right here. So if you look at the um, the fat distribution of, for example, humans, when they have, like, I guess, more, for example, <laughs> um, I think that can help you a lot in seeing where to place the fat, what the shape of the fat looks like, and um, how it affects the, the volume overall. <clears throat> um, okay. I like the rounded shoulders. Generally speaking, if you have fat, especially for females, it seems that way. Or I think for males too, the shoulders get very round. I think you get like pretty much like a layer of fat on your arms, which makes the transition here. What you actually can see sometimes if, if for example, for, for um, females, let's say, what you can see is a pretty sharp shoulder, but then you have this fat part that comes right here. So you have this pretty star stark contrast right here, which is pretty interesting to see sometimes. Um, which can, you know, which can arise right here. Um, so yeah, maybe looking at the fat distribution um, and see how it sort of shapes the body or reshapes the body. I think that's going to be the most helpful thing here. Um, I've never really practiced that myself, <laughs> actually. So I need to do that at some point too. Um, but... Yeah, we'll probably do that at some point. Um, but that would probably be the one that I would look at to learn what, I guess, fat characters look like. Or more obese characters. Lips are hard to make, just saying. Yeah, what I often see is that people, tr um, that people try to, or they, probably not they try to, but it's accidental. They, they don't really give them a lot of depth. Lips have a lot of depth, well, because they're basically the opening for the hole that is the mouth, you know? So they actually have a lot of depth. But a lot of, a lot of people don't really sort of create a big, deep crease um, in between both lips. I think that if you keep that in mind, that is probably one of the things that you that will help you the most when you want to sculpt lips. 
and improve your sculpting of lips <laughs> when you keep that in mind. Okay, the next one is this one. We have feet. Okay, going from the body to the feet. Let's begin with these ones. Maybe these ones too. Let's begin here. Okay. Um, overall, the structure looks pretty good um, from what I can see so far. They seem a little bit short, maybe. Maybe that's just me. I think generally speaking, your your foot from here, well, your foot, that's not a foot, your foot, um, generally speaking, your foot proportion or length, your foot is as long as your upper arm or your forearm. Well, basically any of your arm bones because both are um, the same length. So maybe if you have a character, if you have a um, like a full character, not just feet, of course, you can look at the arm length and compare that to the foot length to see if it's long enough. Another thing, I think if I remember correctly, the proportions for toes are they begin in the well three quarters of the foot length is just the foot, and then the last quarter is where the the toes begin. If I remember correctly, <clears throat> um, I don't, I can't really see it here necessarily. If it's if it's um if that's long enough another thing that sort of jumps out to me right now in this view is the the heel looking at the heel for example for him or roberto you can see how the heels are very very sharp oh sorry you can see the heels are very have a very very sharp ending i think what is kind of um what you can change on this foot is it it feels like it's floating right now it doesn't really look like it's grounded to make something look grounded um you can give it weight basically and the what the weight would do to the foot is it would push onto the ground which means that the volume or the the, the sort of you know i guess yeah the volume of your foot down here gets squished together and if because it doesn't there's no room to go upwards it goes sideways so you can create this sort of um very flat edge at the bottom where it connects to the floor right now it looks very very smooth here so what you could try is you could sharpen this edge down here a little bit uh, especially here you can see it's very very round maybe sharpen the edge can help to make look make it look more grounded and then also going to the heel and making it look more or making it a little bit sharper can help too maybe we can do that here actually if we grab the smooth brush again and blur everything into oblivion <laughs> let's see if that works so do this to make it a little bit sharper there you go and then i don't know if we can do it here can we sharpen it i guess a little bit that can help to make it look a little bit gr more ground <clears throat> <clears throat> um this seems like a pretty strong like con or like a strong transition to the to the thighs no that the whatever the lower legs <laughs> here that could just be because you haven't added the muscles i think the transition from here to here is a little bit easier um yeah let's do we have a we have a another view right here hold on we have this one okay yeah i think overall you can look at the um the shapes especially down here a little bit more when it comes to like the edge it like this part looks very smooth but then you have like a very sharp edge here or so much sharp edge here i think overall looking at these shapes again and defining them a little bit more can help another thing that i noticed right here is these looks this looks like um very like they look very round generally speaking because your your fingers for example or your toes are supposed to rotate inwards they have like this hollow point here so that there's room for the i guess hold on uh i guess you could see how there's like there's this free space that then gets occupied by the volume of the finger that is down here but the finger has to be quite thin at the bottom just because well because it needs room to rotate and to give these toes that room to rotate i think what you could do is you could kind of remove some of the volume that we, that we can see right here this looks very very round right now and maybe just get rid of getting rid of some of the volume can also help make the 
toes look a little bit more organic, basically. What you can oftentimes see in, in feet is this C shape, or they look like um, a finger bone. Let me show you what a finger bone looks like. Finger bone. Um, well, can we see one from the side? I don't want to see broken fingers. Okay, dude. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Uh, come on. There it is. Oh. Okay, here we go. So that's what... It, wow, okay. So that's what it looks like. It has this, this sort of U shape. See? Um, that's sort of... That's somewhat what bone... I mean, what toes also look like. They have this, this sort of free space in the middle here. Um, so that, yeah, that's something you could try and change too. Okay, we have one more, which is number four, which is a skull. Okay, let's go and add that to Photoshop too. Why not? Photoshop seems to be nice to me today. Maybe because I stepped down uh, a version or two, it's a little bit more optimized. We have the front view and we have the side view. Oh, hold on. We have the side view. Um, I would suggest, I would think that this is a uh, human skull. <laughs> um, in general, I could also see this as a animal skull, but I would guess it's a human skull. You know, um, just because of the proportions and the shapes that I see right now. Um, so one thing. Mm, that I notice is, of course, that could just be that you haven't really like defined the shapes too much yet. But um, one thing that I notice is that generally speaking, you have the nose shape is like a hard shape. So you have like a very wide ending right here. And then it ends in this little bridge in the middle. The bridge isn't here, isn't here. <laughs> and we also have like more of a round shape rather than this hard shape. So that's one thing you, you can uh, try and adjust. Another thing is the width of the bone right here. Generally speaking, the bone is quite thin actually here, or it, it's very steep. So we have a very steep um, fall off, especially here over here. Let's look at a skull real quick. Skull. Let's look at uh, this one. Well, front view. There you go, you can see it. See how it's very... Can we... Okay. See how it's very steep right here? This one is quite thin, and then it goes deep into the eye hole, I guess. Here you can see it too. Um, that's one thing you, you can adjust. Just kind of bring these the bridge here closer together. There you go. Okay. Another thing is the eye shape. The eye shape are not necessarily round. They have more like an around. Um, I don't remember what the name is like. An oval shape. Um, so what we can see here, or no? So generally speaking, um, to distinguish female and male skulls, what you can oftentimes see is that males have more like cube-like eye holes, and females have more round eye holes. Let's look at um, female male skull. Here you can see the difference or here. That's the real one. Um, you can see here these eyes are generally, first of all, a little bit smaller because of the, I guess, skull size overall. The skull size is bigger. So we have a bigger jaw compared to the female one, for example. We also have a um, smaller eyes compared to the size, of course. They are generally speaking more cube-like in their shape, the eye holes, than the female ones. Um, and yeah, of course, the proportions are a little bit different because of how big the skull is overall. <clears throat> so one thing you can try is, first of all, I think the, the jaw is quite, quite thin right now, quite long and quite thin. So one thing you can try is just 
move oh wrong direction move everything a little bit higher maybe just a little bit and then make it a little bit wider too to give it some more room that could also just be the i guess camera um, focal length that just kind of skews or distorts the image but um, that would be one thing another thing would be maybe the eye size you can probably reduce it a little bit there you go okay the distance between the nose and teeth looks quite big right now. Maybe we can move that up too. We probably didn't change the chin. A little bit gets blurry, more and more, more blurry. <laughs> um, and then I think one more thing that is a little bit smoother is the transition from the cheekbone in the silhouette, the transition from the cheekbone to the back of the head, basically. Um, for yours, it's very, very strong. You can see here how strong it is, this angle. I think this angle can be a little bit more, I guess, softer. So from, from this one, <laughs> from a 90 degree angle, maybe to a 45 degree angle, I think that might be a little bit um, better. So maybe reducing the roundness here a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. We have the, the next person. We've covered all the ones from Zero. The next one is by... Barker, he submitted two pieces, the first one being a shield. Unfortunately, when I looked at his art station, he posted two 3D sketch fab, I think, um, 3D views, which you can like rotate around and all that. Fortunately, that didn't work for me for some reason. Usually it works, but apparently there it didn't. Um, so I made a screenshot so we can see it. Um, hold on. So we have 10 minutes for each. There you go. So for him. <clears throat> um I like the I like the shield. I think it looks cool. One thing I like a lot is the detail in the texture. So we have not only the color itself, we also have structure of the wood that we can see. We also have um variation, which I like a lot to make it look more realistic. Like for example, these scratches on like the scratches that sort of create a variation in color, I guess brightness, for example. It changes the color, it gives it a more random look because it looks like it's been used before. Um, so the color gets sort of, you know, scratched, for example, scratched off. We have these these sort of spots right here too. So that's, I think the, the wood material looks really good. I don't know if there's actually a bump material or a bump texture applied to it as well. It might be, it might just be that it, it's fairly low res so we can't see it, or that is where these dark spots for the, for the wood comes from. Um, so the wood looks pretty good. I like the wood. Um, the one thing that I, um, think you can improve is the metal itself <clears throat> um so if we compare the wood for example to the metal here in the middle so this one to this one we can see a big difference the one that i just talked about the variation um the wood looks like it's been used for you know like 15 years in war and then the metal looks very very clean it looks like some sort of it looks like a lamp that, <laughs> or not, not, not a lamp. It looks very, very, very new, basically. Um, as if it's just been, I guess, you've used old shield wood and then you combine it with new metal, you refurbish it, basically. Um, what you can do to change that is either reduce the amount of scratches that we have here. So bring this wood closer to the clean look of the metal or bring more of this these scratched surfaces these i guess what are they called um like variation let's say bring some more variation into the shader of this metal so one thing you could try is you could maybe even grab the scratches that you have here um if this is just like an image texture that you use you could maybe use a color ramp to just because these scratches are so bright you could increase the you could use a color ramp and then basically filter everything out except for these white scratches and then apply those to the to the shield so that, that you can kind of copy those scratches to the metal too. That could be something you can try. Another thing is you can just grab like from Polyhaven, for example, what I like to do is I go to Polyhaven. I go to the textures and then I look mostly for terrain, for example, or maybe this one even works, Rust Cores. Um, I don't really look for the color. What I'm looking for is the luminance for the black and white image. Why? 
because that one can be used for variation in the color, the the um, the roughness, or the bump map even. So I'm looking for any images or for any textures that I can use for finer details to add to any of my materials. So this one looks really good for stuff like oh hello, for stuff like small little I guess scratches or maybe even bigger scratches maybe what is it called erosion on the metal stuff like um these small blips right here these small dots could be i don't know like sword hits or whatever um and then i would probably use this maybe use a color ram to kind of increase the strength of the black and white image for example to give the effect for example the roughness variation or the color variation uh, make them stronger make them more distinct to give this metal a more rough look a more a, a, make it look like it's being used before um which you know brings it closer in or you know can sort of creates a more coherent composition or model when you compare the wood to the metal i think that's one thing you can try <clears throat> um you can see for example it might just be the 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 sampling or the the resolution but you can see some variation in the metal right here. I think you can see it in here too, but you can especially see it in the, on the side here. It is pretty rough, but what you can see is variation in the brightness. We have some bright, we have some bright spots right here, right there, even here. But then we also have like a, it looks like a noise texture being applied to the color or roughness. That sort of either reflects more or less, or it's just darker or brighter. You can see there's some sort of, some sort of texture on it. It seems like it at least. Um, so you've probably added some variation, but you can probably do go even further, especially if you've done it for the shield. Um, if the shield looks like super, super rough, it would probably make sense that the, the rest of the shield would also have some sort of, um, let's say, I guess, variation <laughs> to say it once more, you know, I think that could be one thing that you could try. <clears throat> um, of course, the render isn't really necessarily... I don't want to, you know, we can talk about the composition, but I think, you know, to kind of highlight the shield. Um, well, it wasn't really a composition because it was a 3D model. So, you know, you, it wasn't really a composition um, anyway. <clears throat> um, yeah. I think that's um, everything to the shield of course if you want to make a more appealing render for example what you could try is to cre to create um different i guess perspectives or maybe even a macro shot you can achieve a macro shot by reducing the by going very close to the object and then using stuff like depth of field make that very short make that very small like a 0.4 even less to make to make it look like it's very, very fine detail that you're photographing um, to get something to make a macro shot very, very sharp in real life, for example, you have to add or there is a lot of depth of field that's being created so that you, for example, if you want to photograph a bug, the bug will be very, very sharp, but everything else around it will be very, very, very blurry. That's the effect that you try to create here for uh, macro shots, for example. And this macro shot can, for example, be used to kind of show the texture of the shield a little bit more, maybe even the modeling. So if you go for macro shot for example you can see it right here this one's probably the best one hold on come on where is it there it is maybe you can see the head is basically in or it's sharp but then even just the body behind it is immediately um, blurry that's sort of what you how you can sort of identify macro shots this one too the the um the bug is 100 sharp and then immediately behind it everything is blurry. Um, so that's sort of how you can create macro shots for your renders too. They also add a lot of realism to your scene. Um, just adding depth of field overall does that. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, overall, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I think the shading is something that you can, if you improve the shading on this one, I think it'll look even better. Of course, let's talk about one more thing when you want to say, when you want to talk about <clears throat> sort of portraying something or showing off a model. Um, I think what you can also do is sort of put it in a scene, like a, I don't know, weapon rack, for example, 
just to kind of bring it into the world and sort of, you know, maybe make it a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that helps to sort of putting it into a certain scene and highlighting that it, like that that object could maybe help to kind of give it a more appealing look. <clears throat> of course, this sort of also has like its use case where you kind of just want to focus on the shield itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, also from Barker. The next one is the, I think, Oni mask. Is that what he's what he call it? Wait, or is it? There it is. Hanya mask. Okay. Looks familiar. I don't know if that's exactly what I have in mind, or I don't really know what a Hanya mask looks like exactly, but. Let's grab this one and then let's also grab uh, this one. Nope, you know what? Oh, hold on. We're going to use this one, but in a new tab. There you go. Okay. So let's look at a real life Hanya, Hanya mask. Uh, Hanya mask to N. There you go. Oh, these ones. Okay, yeah, I kind of remembered. I, I, I guess that, that that's what you mean. Okay. <clears throat> um, So looking at these, I think there are a few things that sort of... That sort of... um. That are the characteristics of these masks. Tanya mask is for female ogres and Oni is for male ogres. Oh, okay. So these ones are for female, I guess. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's look at Oni Mask too. I kind of, I'm kind of cu curious. Oni Mask. Okay, they don't really look too different. So these, this one, I think, is exactly the same <laughs> that we can see here too. There you go. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, okay. So let's see. I think one of the um, sort of um, defining factors for these sort of masks is the definition on the expression. I think the expression is very important on these. Um, what I mean with definition is, first of all, the nose has a very, very distinct shape that is sort of triangle-ish, you could say, if you include the nose bridge. Um, we have this V shape down here. And then we have these very, very defined nostrils right here in this C shape or U shape, you could say. If you go through any of them, you can see they all have this very defined no nostril here too. And this sort of triangle shape with this V shape down here. Here too, depending on how sharp you want to make it here too. And then here too. No, this one actually doesn't. Interesting. Um, so that I guess that's not necessarily like an important thing or like a must have thing. Um, but that's one thing that I kind of notice. Another thing is, of course, the mouth shape with these very round mouth corner endings, which you can see here too, very round. Um, in this one, it's also very round here too. Um, another thing, of course, the horns. Um, hair seems to be included sometimes too. Maybe, maybe not, I guess. Well, it's a mask, so maybe not. <laughs> um, okay, so now we... Oh, and then maybe... Yeah, overall, the, the, the expression is very defined. Another thing that I noticed is the the eyebrows are very, very defined too. So it's like... Um, it's like, um, I guess, sculpting... What is it called? Wood chipping? It's like wood chipping, basically. Sculpting wood, where you define the expression a lot. Also, these folds here. The eyebrows are very defined. Cheekbones too the nostril, the nose itself, and then the mouth, of course. Let's go to yours. I think the, the one that is, or the thing that is of, that I saw is, that I noticed um, first is the width, let's say the proportion. I think the proportions are what um, differentiates yours currently from these ones. Um, these ones look very, they have a very, let's say, 
well, you, you, there are different head shapes for, I guess, humans. So if you go to human head shapes, we have different head shapes. We, of course, have round. We have, like, I guess you could say cube-like. It's kind of hard to... There it is. So we have long, I guess. <laughs> Rectangle, that's what I mean. We have round. We have a square face. We have inverted triangle where you have like the white part up top and then it's getting pretty pointy at the bottom. Heart shape, which is similar to the triangle, but it has this these this rounding here for the hairline. And it's I think a little bit rounder at the edges too. Diamond, which is wide but thin at the bottom and at the top. Pearl. I don't know what that is. No, pear, okay. So it's wider somewhere in the cheek region. Triangle in the other direction, so it's thin at the top. And then oval, which is like an oval, I guess. Um, round, but longer, I guess. <laughs> um, one, I think what would fit to these masks the most when it comes to the head shape, or the, yeah, let's say head shape, would be the, I would say the square one. We have a very defined jawbone. We also have a very defined, I guess, um, jaw or not jaw, but chin. I think that fits the most for for this. Um, another thing, another one that might work is the inverted square or triangle because for this one, actually, does it? Yeah, maybe. Um, because for no, you know what? I think the. I think it's very square-like. The distinct factor or the, the distinct feature for the square um, look is that the jawbone, the jaw width is almost the same as the forehead width. You can see here, this is that wide right here. And then the jaw is basically as wide here. I think that is also the case here. Well, the horn sort of are where the hairline would be. So if you, for example, go to, let's see. Can we see one from the front? This one, for example, you can see it's very wide. The, the jaw is very wide. And then the forehead is also similar as wide, maybe even thinner. So the, the jaw is wider than the, the forehead here too. See? Um, so I think one thing you can, you, can, uh, you can think about is making the jaw wider. I think that can help. Let's see if we can actually do that here. So this one, we're actually going to use the liquify tool. Maybe accentuating the jaw a little bit more can help. Let's actually go. Nope. No, we're going to stay here. Accentuate the jaw a little bit more. Right here. Make it nice and wide. Maybe also the face seems pretty long right now. We can maybe bring everything a little bit closer. So the nose is shorter. You can see the distance from like the nose is pretty long for yours. If you compare that to these ones, you can see the nose is actually very, very short. Looking at this one here too. The distance from here between the eyes to the nose tip is pretty, pretty short. Um, so we could bring that together too. Just bring it a little bit. Oh, hello. 722 is a little bit too much. So bring the nose higher. And then also make the nose wider. Give it this V shape, this triangle. There you go. Okay. We can maybe also, because we want to accentuate the sort of mean look, bring down the eyebrows right here, bring it down. Okay. And then we can maybe bring the chin overall a little bit higher too. There you go. So now we have a wider jaw, which you can see right here. Well, the cursor is too big. <laughs> you can see right here. Uh, my cursors. Okay. There you go. So we can see we have a wider jaw right here. We have um, overall the proportions are a little bit closer together, which means that the nose can be shorter and create this sort of triangle shape right here, or I guess diamond shape, you could also say. Um, we have rounder mouth corners and we also brought down the 
eyebrows to make it look a little bit angrier, I guess you could say. <clears throat> um, of course, you can still tweak the overall, I guess, shapes. But I think the, the overall face itself has, has quite a lot of depth. You can see here we have very, very sharp edges here, for example, that creates depth. You have like dark shadows here and then very bright highlights right, right next to it. So the the um the depth of the scope looks pretty good. Here it looks a little bit, I guess you could say, um less so. Um, I think you can still tweak the structure overall, um, but over here it looks pretty good. <clears throat> um yeah, maybe we could you could even bring down the forehead a little bit. Let's just do that real quick. Bring down the forehead a little bit to make it bring it more into this square shape. Just a little bit. There you go. Okay, so that's the before. I mean, after looking at this, that's what it sort of looks like. There you go. Um, so before, I mean, after and before. I think the thing that you can tweak or the thing that that'll help you the most in improving this would be looking at the proportions and the, yeah, the proportions basically. So this is after, this is before. Nose is shorter. The expression here, the eyebrow is a little bit meaner, I guess you could say. Overall, the face is, I guess, shorter overall. Um, we brought the, especially the jaw out. The jaw helped a lot in making this look more like the, I guess, original. So the jaw, we brought it out more. The chin is also, I guess more square like rather than like this long oval I guess you could say and then we have the final result <clears throat> yeah I think the proportions will help you the most here okay we have the next one did he submit oh no that was the second piece okay next one is James James submitted a piece it's called parallel apparently <laughs> That's what the image says. Uh, let's actually save this. There you go. After. Okay. So this one is his. Is by James. A different color profile. Oh, Pro Photo RGB. Interesting. <laughs> okay. This one looks very painterly. I would think that this is um, Eevee, just because he always likes to, uh, <laughs> he likes to argue why Eevee is the best. Um, so we can see a, we can see outlines, we can see this sort of swirly effect, looks like this is some sort of noise with a um, color ramp applied to it. I don't really know how you created these, what are they, like the, these sparkles? I think they are, no, I think they're also a, texture is that a um what is the texture again a um a voronoi texture maybe or it's just post-production i don't exactly know but you have, a, you have a hand right here reaching into the brain <laughs> into the brain of eevee haters i guess there you go um and then we have the eevee hater <laughs> Uh, okay. Eevee is going to be the best. Okay. When? <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, but you know what's going to happen? Eevee is going to... Uh, I mean, Cycles is going to turn into Eevee. Because the moment Cycles um, is a real time, it's basically going to replace Eevee. <clears throat> okay. Um... Okay, so the one thing I think that I notice um, that I've noticed is the post production. I think you can work a little bit more in the color correction. I guess you can you can kind of correct the colors and brightness maybe a little bit to make it a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more. I guess give it more contrast. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and apply my new favorite shader, which is called. The camera raw filter. 
Of course, you can do these changes in Blender too, but we're going to do them in Photoshop. So let's go with basic. So temperature and tint, tint is not necessarily what I want to change here. Maybe you could do that too to kind of highlight the orangey yellow values a little bit more. Actually, you know what? Why not? Let's do that a little bit. There you go. Plus, plus 40 might not be a little bit, but <laughs> you know what? I think that's pretty good. Um, Actually, no, we kind of see this tins yellow too. I kind of want to keep the original colors. So let's keep it there. Um, so one thing we can do, I think we can give it more contrast. Right now, the contrast is very low because of sort of the, the highlights aren't very bright and the shadows aren't too dark. Um, the outline, of course, creates darkness, but it's not necessarily creating shadows it's supposed to sort of mimic shadows but it's not well it's not necessarily supposed to mimic shadows but it's supposed to mimic the contrast between the shadows um and the i guess bright um area that meet in the middle this time only because the line out of refused to work on cycles oh gotta get photoshop <laughs> i think there are pretty good alternatives that are free so you don't need to uh you don't need to use Photoshop. I just use it because I, I'm used to it. <clears throat> um, what was the other one that um, Crow suggested? I can't remember. Um, Affinity. I think it's like Affinity Photo or something. If you look up Affinity, you should find it. Um, so one thing you can do is you can increase the contrast a little bit. You can see because I increased the... Exp no, wait, wait, wait. We don't need necessarily need to increase the exposure. But what we can do is we can either change the contrast or we can just... I guess it just the contrast ourselves by <clears throat> changing the highlights. So the highlights make everything that is bright brighter and the shadows make everything that is dark darker. This way we can create more contrast. You can see it doesn't change too much and that is exactly because we don't have too much contrast. Um, contrast gives an image depth, gives an image, uh, makes it look I guess more appealing I guess you could say um, it makes it look mm, more interesting, more dynamic. And you can see here also the, the color values that they are all sort of in the same spot. But this one is somewhere over here because we have more red in, in the thing. Um, but if we would have like a lot of, I guess, bright values as well as dark values, you would see there being more waves here. So we would have probably one that is pretty high here. We would want to have that is we would have one that is pretty high here for the highlights or whites, and then we would have one more which is pretty high here for the blacks and shadows. We could try that actually. Um, wait, so that's after that is before. It didn't really change too much, of course. Maybe we can do it manually. Grease pencil. I think it's a shader, right? Hmm. Okay. Let's do it manually. So we can burn it. I think that's brightening up. No, that's darkening, right? Yeah, that's darkening. Okay. We're going to make this darker. So I think the, the spots that can be darker are down here, where we have the, the shadow, of course, where we have the hair. So we can create some depth here. Same with the ear, maybe. I don't make it. I don't want to make it too dark. <clears throat> right here. Of course, you could also say, well, it's it's supposed to be very, very comic-y, so there isn't supposed to be shadows necessarily. It looks it's supposed to be more like cell shading. Well, even there, you have, I guess, shadows, but still, you know, we have flat colors. So something more like this. You can see we add some more depth in here. And for the hair too. Maybe over here. And then for the hand too, just add some shadows right here. Give it some more depth. And of course, we do not only have shadows, we also have highlights. So let's switch to the highlights tool, the dodge tool trying to dodge these shadows <laughs> there you go give it some more 
contrast between everything. Okay, we can maybe even do it over here. And there you go. We can maybe even do it over here. We can maybe create some sort of magic um, spell by dodging some areas over here like this. This might be harder to do in uh, Blender, of course. Um, just, But these are just examples of what you could try. There you go. There you go. Maybe even darker areas too. Did you submit one or two pieces? That determines how much we can spend. Okay, we, we can spend some more time on this. Um, okay, maybe even some darker areas here or over here. I don't know. Create some more contrast here in the background too. You can see how can we, um, what if I set this to 10%? Is it a little bit weaker? Okay, so we can create some contrast here. Maybe even up here because well the bright part is up here, but then we can make the the add some more contrast to the background here, where there's not really that much to see to kind of bring the eye away from the like you want to highlight what the eye is supposed to see. So if you for example darken the background, you can focus on the subject. So if we darken the area up here for example where there is nothing or well there's orange but nothing else <laughs> we can we can lead the viewer's eye more over to what is important like this head for example or the hand we can even do the same here just make it darker there you go and then we go from a pretty you could say um con well we can going from a low contrast image to a high contrast image so comparing that before and after this is after this is before you can see the difference just by changing or by adding some highlights and shadows how much that can change the image um of course then we can also go into the camera raw afterwards or you can do some more color adjustments in there why don't we do that <laughs> let's do that here um go in here Smart object. I'm focusing more on the composition and colors right now, just because I don't, I haven't used the line art too much yet, except for wireframe views. <clears throat> so I can't really tell you if there are like things you can improve there. Um, but yeah. So what we could do here maybe is now we can use the contrast. You can also see now how the light, I mean the how these values have changed. We have a lot of shadows, of course, because there's a lot of dark areas. But we also have a whole slew of new colors in the exposure. You can see the graph is way, way higher. We have highlights, a few. And then we even have some whites. So basically, a very, very, very bright image. A very, very, very bright pixels. We don't really have too many blacks, but we don't really need them. <laughs> well, we could add them, but we haven't. Okay, so we could even increase the contrast even more if we would do that. It will look something more like this for example we can maybe even adjust the highlights a little bit make them brighter if we wanted to i don't want to i don't want to make too bright shadows there you go make it more like a night scene for example there you go before and after see we've even increased the uh, contrast even more you can see the difference in the graph before and after before after before after <laughs> and then we go from oh we go from uh, from this which doesn't have too much contrast um and yeah basically you know fairly flat colors to something like this where you have uh 
a lot of contrast and you know highlights and dark areas this might be too much maybe um but it's just an example of what you could do you know um you could achieve stuff like this by um changing for example the background maybe what you've done here for the background is you've added a gradient to the background to add the two different colors that could be i, I don't know how you created it of course um but that um could be it maybe you could play around with more distinct lights if the lights for example if you don't use an hdri for example you might have used an hdri i don't know um if you've used an hdri what might help to to increase the contrast in your image um, is to use smaller lights or so either a sunlight for example which creates a very very sharp shadows or you can also use a um, a very small point or area light the smaller the light is the sharper the shadow will be um, so if you want to make more contrast or images with higher contrast you can yeah make your your, your lights a little bit smaller <clears throat> Um, overall, I like the idea. <laughs> I think it's cool. Um, one thing that I kind of, um, what you could see, what you could say about the composition is you can see it, the hand is sort of creating this um, magic effect, you could say, which um, looks like it's sort of supposed to connect or transition to the head. So what could maybe help is Maybe either a glow effect or some sort of um, something to transition this blue to the head. Maybe the head hair is turning blue or the there's just some like blue glow around it just to kind of um, give it a more. It looks kind of painted on right now. So if it's like part of the finger color rather than being some sort of magic, for example, generally speaking, magic always exudes some sort of <clears throat> or expresses exudes i don't know i've never used that word before <laughs> i don't even know what it means <laughs> um it always um it's not only just like a the hand that is glowing but there's like a glow around it maybe there's even a flame so there's something that magic does that interacts with the environment <clears throat> that could be one thing that you could try you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna interact with my environment by drinking something from my bottle Try drinking water of course Okay, so I basically use magic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think those are the tips that I um, that I can give you on this. <clears throat> Just to recap, um, contrast I think is a big thing to make your images look more interesting. Also, contrast can help you a lot. Let's let's not say contrast. Let's rather say highlights and shadows are very important for your image to not only lead. The viewer to what you want to set the focus on but also give the image more depth give the image more contrast of course that's where the contrast comes in and um yeah make it look more like this for example <clears throat> okay i think that's uh pretty much everything that i can say to this i hope this helps <laughs> um let's get to the next one <clears throat> Oh, let's save it. You want to pin it on your wall? <laughs> well, there you go. Now you made a new word. Wait, isn't that a word? What, 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 what did I say? Exude? Wait. Exude? There it is. Wait. Discharge or to be discharged, discharged slowly and steadily. See? <laughs> Display strongly and openly. See? Easy. I knew that it's a word. I just didn't know what it, what it meant. So it actually works here. It slowly exudes energy outwards, you know? <laughs> okay. Next one. We have... Memers Haven. He be memeing, but also he be creating. He be creating three pieces. We're going to begin with the first one. Who would have guessed? The demon. Demon.png. Let's open it up. Okay. 
Oh, hold on. Um, what is it? 20 divided by 15. I mean, no, hold on. 20 divided by 3 is 6.6. 6. Wait, what? 6. 20, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, 7 minutes. There you go. So, you've made a demon. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing I like is the dip. Okay, no, no, hold on. First of all, what I want to mention is the the same that we just said about uh, James. <clears throat> of course, this is probably just supposed to be a render to show off him or them or it. <laughs> um, but to make him look more appealing, make them it will look more appealing. I think what you can do is increase the contrast. So you can see we have some shadows, we have some brighter areas, but I think it can be stronger. Let's just quickly go into the uh, camera raw filter to kind of expose how much color variation or luminance variation we actually have. Um, there it is. See, oh, it's even stronger, actually. <laughs> so we can see the shadows have a lot of... Um, can you actually see that? Hold on. Okay. Did you see that? You didn't, right? Oh, no. Okay, well, now you can see it. <laughs> so that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like in the beginning for James 2. Um, we have a lot of values right here in the shadows and in the mid mid value range but there's basically nothing in the highlights whites and in the white range maybe not even in the black range so maybe increasing the strength of your lights can help so we can maybe sort of slightly do that here too see how much that just changes just increasing the highlights by 100 <laughs> See how much this just sort of shows the character a little bit more, makes it brighter, gives you more, I guess, depth to play with, let's say. We do that in the other direction too. It's kind of harder there because we don't have a high contrast. Oh, hello. See, just by bringing the whites up, how much that changes. Um, <clears throat> Maybe the horns are a little bit too bright now, but, you know. Uh, you probably get what I mean. Um, so kind of maybe looking at some, um, I think Blender Guru has a good character shading or character lighting tutorial. I think um, Flip Normals just released a new one too a while back. Um, that might be interesting um, to see some standard, I guess, lighting scenes that you can use or how you can create good uh, lighting scenes. It's like creating, flicking a light switch. Yeah, true. <laughs> Let's, uh, you know, even I, when I do post put post-production sometimes see how much brighter you can make the render it doesn't really occur to you when you render it yourself because you kind of see well it's hard to see how bright i can make it before it's getting too bright um but that's one thing you can you can look at um let's go to the character itself <clears throat> um i like the depth that you have in your character you have very very deep cuts right here for example you have a very deep spot right there um one thing i can see is that the eyelids don't necessarily envelop or are sticking close to the eyeball so we can see a hole right here a hole you know what i'm not gonna do it you know what i'm gonna do it this way so we have a hole right here same here it's kind of not sticking to the eyeball so that's one thing you can probably fix um the lips as we said before are somewhat missing depth Looking at real lips, let's just compare that to real lips. Uh, lips. Liss, yep, exactly that. Lips. Can we see a three quarter view of lips, please? No, there it is. Well, those are female lips, of course, but still. Shout outs. <laughs> there you go, you can see. <clears throat> do you see this intense deep crease right there that is what i mean with depth you know why why that exists 
because these lips are not connected <laughs> because they're like if i put my hands together hold on if i put my hands together you can see it doesn't matter how much i push them together the line in between here it's hard to show it the line right here right there <laughs> the line right here will always stay there because the, these two hands are not sticking together there's no surface that transitions from this hand to this hand there will always be a crease between them so making this crease very deep can help a lot in giving the lips a more natural and a more i guess a more natural look and make them give them more depth basically um if you see that your lips are sort of drifting apart too much one thing you can try is to create this crease is you can go to the um, crease brush for example and then change the fall off to sharp or linear that could help or if you afterwards see that they're drifting apart um, what you could do is you could um, use a use the pinch brush to bring them closer together again <clears throat> i like that you've added, added the um fat pad right here that looks good i like it i think it needs some more depth here too though <laughs> um i like the fat pad that comes from here to the side Mm, there usually is also a fat pad right here above the eyelid that generally goes from here into the middle like this which sort of fills this volume makes it smoother and gives it like a outwards going volume i guess <clears throat> mm, and then you can probably look at the at the muscles underneath the lips here which look somewhat like this and then we have the chin right here this sort of structure creates a very, very distinct chin shape, I guess, or mandible shape, let's say chin shape, where the muscles right here that connect to the lips right here are sort of bulging outwards, oftentimes, or well, they sometimes they do they do more, sometimes they do less. For males, it's usually more. Um, so that could be also something you can look at. Just kind of overall, I think you can still improve the facial structure and then that, that would probably be what do you can start with um yeah yeah um you could maybe also look at neck muscle structure <laughs> or neck structure overall um unfortunately we don't have time to go into that too much but yeah just a few things you could try here let's go to the next one the next one is Tank rotate text. Interesting. No, textured. Okay. There it is. Okay. Let's look at your tank video. <laughs> okay. There's something that immediately jumps out to me that could be intentional, that could also be unintentional. The thing that I'm talking about is... Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. Um, it is the way it is moving. Well, it's not moving, it's standing in place, but the way the, um, what are they called actually? The um, the chains? I don't know. Um, these things, how they rotate, the wheels, let's say. Um, if you would let it, like if the wheels would spin the way that they do right here, what they would do or what the tank would do the tracks, true, yeah, yeah, the tracks. Um, if the tracks rotate like this, it would spin in, it spin in a circle. <laughs> um, because one is moving forward, one is moving backwards, you see? One is rotating in this direction, and the other one is rotating the same direction, but of course it's mirrored, so it's... Hold on, can I do it? Uh, it's... So this one, and then we have this one, so that's what it looks like. Okay, and what that does is it rotates the tank because one is moving forward and one is moving backward. So it does this. Ooh. Um, I guess that just, you know, if you want to talk about animation, that could be something that you could look at. If that was intentional, unintentional, of course, if it's supposed to rotate in place, then I guess that's, uh, that's also fine, I guess. <laughs> um, overall, I like the, I like the tank. Um, the thing here is again that we don't have too much contrast so what also contrast does is it exposes the 
finer details or the surface imperfection of surfaces. If you have a very bright light shining onto a surface, you can see the, the scratches more, you can see the um, roughness changes more, you can maybe even see the color changes more. Because we don't really have necessarily have that here, it's harder to see these finer details. But overall, the colors, I like them. The modeling too looks pretty good. I haven't done too many, you could say, um, hard surface models yet, or vehicles especially. I don't think I've ever done a vehicle. So overall, the modeling looks pretty good. I don't see any shading errors or anything like that. So that looks good too. So I think the, the main thing maybe that you could try is um, to maybe create a, a scene to sort of highlight the aspects of the tank a little bit more to, you know, make the, the render more appealing, for example. What I mean by that is you probably wanted to show off the lights glowing. So what you could try is actually creating like a small scene where the tank is sitting in, maybe sitting on a street where there's a light, a lamp shining down, which highlights like the middle of the tank. But then the front and back is maybe just lit up by the moonlight. So it's a little bit darker. You can still see something, but you it's not pitch black, but it's like pretty black, um, which means that you have light right here. Um, but everywhere else you don't, which means you can still show the lights um, like glow. <clears throat> They're rotating. This is actually for a game, so there are going to be more animations. Okay, interesting. Um, so what you could try, for example, is you could go in here and please. Uh, I don't know, like. Like this. Perfect render, I know. Wait, nope, that's wrong. There you go, and then we could do... That's not the one that I wanted. Okay, we can maybe make it darker. <laughs> there you go. So that this is basically like a light, which um, illuminates the scene right here, so that we can see the the tank itself, the body, but then the rest of the tank might be illuminated by, for example, the uh, the um, the lights themselves. So we could maybe expose them a little bit. Wait, right here. There you go. Okay. I'm not the best at compositing, but this might be an idea. Um, <clears throat> and then maybe some sort of, you know, environment around it, like a street or a um, some sort of house or rubble, something like that, maybe. Um, yeah, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. I like it. Um, I think we need to go to the next one. I actually didn't start the timer. <laughs> so yeah, I think it, I sort of said everything that sort of came to my mind. It looks pretty good, actually. It looks it looks good. Not actually. It's not like it's surprising that it looks good, but it looks good. I like it. Let's go to the next one. Number three is another mask. Oh, ha. Okay. So let's go through the same things that we've talked about before. Um, let's go and look at the Oni mask again. So we have reference. There it is. So you've made the male version. <laughs> Basically. Let's look at uh, this one again. Okay. So I think here we have a similar case that we um, talked about for the demon. 
in that it probably it, it lacks facial structure definition let's say um it also it seems like all these masks have a nose <laughs> yours doesn't that could just be a creative choice of yours of course um so you know but if you want to say well we want to stick to the original oni mask look it would probably have a nose so maybe you know you could maybe consider adding a nose right here you know like this look at that perfect nose hold on it has a v-shape there you go perfect <laughs> um okay so we can add a nose <clears throat> i think another thing that could help a lot is right now he looks kind of um sad the mask looks sad i think one thing you could consider is making him look angry by bringing down the eyelid or the, not the eyelids the eyebrows by or in the middle here usually expression um a more sad expression is by bringing the um middle of the eyebrow high or the, the space in between the eyebrows high something like this um probably look nothing like sadness but either way <laughs> i can look sad okay <laughs> um and then to make it angry you would lower the um the in between of the brows you would also pull the eyebrows closer into the middle to make it look like this okay so what we would do is we could bring them lower more like that so he looks angry um the way you create this expression is because you have muscles right here that are sort of triangular so we have one muscle the muscles are originating from here uh, like from here and then fan outwards in this direction and if you look angry the muscle flexes together and pulls this part here of the face into the middle, which creates this bunching or this this, this sort of it, it bunches together all the volume of the eyebrows, which looks then like this. It it shoves everything into the middle like this, basically. Um, the Hania mask inspired me to make this one. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you can see the difference before and after. Sad, angry bringing it down then of course the nose i can't really add a nose here but that's one more thing another thing is the jaw size we can't really see the jaw in this view um so it's kind of hard to add it i think overall you, if we can bring it closer to the sort of square shape though so maybe we can do that bring it together a little bit There you go it's hard to oh yeah. maybe a little bit like this you also see the um these ones generally have like the smiling expression so the corner of the mouth is higher than the middle i guess you could say so what you would do is you could bring this lower it looks absolutely scuffed but that's okay <laughs> to make him look like he's smiling a little bit there you go oh no hell yeah <laughs> basically um yeah uh another thing the cheekbones sometimes are very exposed hold on there it is very exposed for example same for this one same for this one too so you could consider that too that could just fall in line with giving the face more structure maybe adding some shadow underneath here or just like maybe making these volumes a little bit bigger or giving them more depth let's say like this um maybe we could bring this down a little bit too hold on what if we just do this <laughs> it looks like some sort of piece of paper that we're just crunching together you know how you can make how you can grab the like you can get an image of somebody and then you can fold it where the nose is so that the eyes look like they're like super low or the nose is super short <laughs> that's what it is that's, that's what that just looked like 
Um, yeah. Overall, I think what will help the most is facial structure, exposing that more kind of um, looking at which pieces are sort of protruding more, which pieces are sort of going into, I guess, what is the difference? What is the opposite of protrusion? Hold on. Um, protrusion, is there a word for it? Cavity, aha. So you would look for protrusions and cavities to kind of see the um the con to kind of look at how it creates its shape. Um, I think the stream that we had two days ago. So yesterday's stream wasn't maybe not as valuable or as act or as packed with information. I think the stream that we did before, where I talked about my thought process and my workflow when it comes to sculpting any any anything basically from an image from a reference image i think that could be helpful in how i think about um how i analyze an image and see where the cavities are where the protrusions are and how the face or how the volume creates its um, contrast or depth so one main my one main point that i look at is the silhouette what helps a lot in references is if you not only have a front view, but also a um, side view. The silhouette in the side view oftentimes shows you, for example, how far the cheekbone protrudes, how much the eyebrow protrudes, how deep the eyeball sits, how, you know, basically gives you more information about the cavities and protrusions. I'm going to say that now forever. <laughs> how much, um, you know, the depth or the 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 volume changes in the face <clears throat> if you only have a front view you can still look at the shadows if the shadows of course are very strong you have a very, very deep part if they're very bright i guess if you have highlights then that's like the the part that is the i guess the the one that is the furthest protruded <laughs> basically yeah so one area that I could see here, for example, is the cheekbone. With the cheekbone, what we could do here is we could... Well, first of all, we're going to add the nose again. So we have a nose right here. There you go, going into the middle. Then we would have a cheekbone that looks something like this. Okay. We would have a jaw that looks somewhat like this. Um, the eyebrows are two very distinct. So we have something like this maybe. There you go. <laughs> Looks pretty scuffed, but maybe you see what I mean. So that's those are sort of the features that sort of make up the um, the um, the mask. Same with the mouth here, which looks very distinct too. Somewhat like this. Mouse drawing always. See so that see how this um, sort of looks. Somewhat similar to what we can see here. Also, oh, one big thing is the eye, the eyeballs, or the eyes themselves. I think you can adjust the shape maybe a little bit too, to make them look more like eyes, like almonds. So we can do something like this. Make them more like almonds. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yep. Look at him. He's happy. <laughs> okay. There you go. And then we give him the, the Chad jaw. And the Chad chin. There you go.
Now he looks like a bunny. Oh no, I ruined it. <laughs> yeah. Those are a few things you could uh, consider. There you go. Now it's pretty hard to see, but I guess it's still visible. Okay. Do we have one more? Or was that... Oh, that was, that was number three. Okay, perfect. So those were all three by Memers Heaven or Haven. Hope those were helpful. I'm going to save this too. Mm. There you go. Let's go to the next one. The next one is by Shorty. Shorty submitted One Piece, which is his sculpt of a dog, if I remember correctly. Hold on. There it is, my first sculpt, and this is supposed to be a dog. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, let's look at a dog. I guess the best way to compare a sculpt is to look at real life, I guess, evidence, real life reference. Dog. There you go. I think this one fits quite well. Nope, let's use this one. This one's easier to see the structure. Okay. <clears throat> can we... Sp hey, can we actually... No, we can't. I thought maybe I can rotate it or, or mirror it. Okay. There you go. Okay. Let's see how we can um, change this more to this. I think overall... Um, to broadly talk about what you could do is depth. <laughs> depth is probably the most important thing when it comes to sculpting. Where are the protrusions? Where are the cavities? Where are the deep spots in the face? And where are the whatever high spots in the face? It's similar to composition when you when we talked about the one from one by James. Composition, having more contrast means you can lead the viewer more to like the, the, the one that the thing that is important. Um, and like contrast does that too. Um, why is contrast important in a sculpt? Because it conveys what like it conveys the structure of the sculpt better. Um, right here you can see it looks very much like um a blob, you could say. Um, it's kind of weird to say that. It's it's like um it looks like it's one piece, basically. Of course, this is also one piece, you could say. But what I mean with that is the contrast is it's very low, which means if you, for example, blur it a little bit. Blur girly. Nope. You very quickly lose the structure inside of the object, which... Um, is there to well the 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 um the structure inside of the object is there to kind of suggest what the object looks like well in that area um so you can see we have eyes we have some sort of like we have some shadows right here but everything overall it looks very smooth if you look at the dog for example what we have here so we have a nose bridge then we have this transition here downwards to the mouth we also have a very sharp line here for the nose looking at yours there's a somewhat sharp nose but it's still pretty round um we have very sharp a very sharp edge here around the eyelid for yours for example it's very very smooth there isn't really that much depth but this one you can see we have a very dark shadow here so you can probably i guess dig into the sculpt a little bit more to create a more depth for the eyes generally speaking dogs look forward so to, to, to create that, you would have to um, dig very deep into the sphere because the sphere surface looks something like this. To make eyes look forward, you would have to dig very, very deep into the surface so that the eyes can sit on the diagonal surface and still look forward. It's hard to explain what I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's understandable. Um, let's kind of see how we can maybe turn this into this by drawing some lines again. Okay, this is kind of annoying. Hold on, I'm going to save this. Okay. 
Okay. Your dog has a companion now. Let's uh, add him to the scene. Okay. So what could we do with this to bring this closer to this one? Um, what I can see, let's let's see the common the common, I guess, aspects that you've included, um, or which. Let's look at the aspects that they have in common. Uh, one thing is both have eyes. <laughs> so we have eyes, we have ears, two of them. Or well, let's just look at one. So we have ears. This one also has ears. We have a nose. This one also has a nose. We have a um, mouth. This one also has a mouth. And uh, yeah, I think overall those are the defined features of the face or the, the, the head. Let's look at how you can change these and what you can also add to make this look more like a dog, for example. Um, okay. So one thing that you can try is let's look at the eye first. So you can see here, if I would draw the surface right now, if I would just draw a straight line going from here to here, it would look something like, like this. If I would do that here, it would something look something like this. See how these lines differ? This one's very, very smooth, very straight. This one is very, very, I guess, it, it's like an S curve. It has a lot of height difference. Um, Let's look at the um, the eye. So this is the eye here, which looks like this. Looking at this eye, looks like this. Oh, hold on. Wait. There you go. It has a different shape. It's kind of harder to see, probably. Um, this one's more supposed to be round rather than, I guess, almond shape. <laughs> Um, another th another one, the nose right now. Let's look at the nose structure. So we have the nose, which is right here. I would guess that this is included in the nose right here. There you go. And then we have the hole right here. And then we have the this part right there. Let's look at the nose for him, which looks like this. I can't draw. <laughs> with a mouse there you go okay another one is the mouth which is right here and then we have a mouth right here another one that I want to include is the silhouette overall well not everything but or okay before we do that let's go to the ears so the ears look like this wait we're at the timer again there we go so we have the ears which look like this and then we have ears which look like this Let's include the silhouette on this side, maybe up to the ear. So this one looks like this. Oh, looks like this. This one looks like this. Let's hide these two images. This might look absolutely weird and not doesn't work at all, but we'll see. Okay, <laughs> it, it works. Um, so we now basically drew all the features um, that they have in common and how they differ. In, I guess, we can just solely focus on these features and see what the differences are. Um, I think overall, what can help you the most in um, improving the scope is to look at the proportions. So for example, the nose is very big compared to this one. It also is rounder and well, it's bigger and is also smoother and rounder than this one. This one has a very, very distinct, I guess, structure, a 
dog's structure for the nose looks, I think, something like something like this for the tip. And then we have a middle line right here. And then we have this. This is basically the side view or the three quarter view. So we have like this diamond shape, which looks like this right there. There you go. Um, I think we, if you, if you kind of bring it more into this diamond shape rather than this sort of round shape like this, that can probably help. Um, another one is the bridge is lower. You can see here the bridge doesn't really have too much. It's pretty straight. So, you know, like this rather than like, oh, rather than this. <clears throat> so we can see here the nose bridge is lower. The forehead is a little bit more, I guess, distinct and higher than the bridge. The ears also point in a different direction. That could just be differences in breeds, of course. So I'm not trying to, I guess, um, nail you on that. <laughs> um, but I think those are a few things you could try. Um, looking at the, looking at maybe this image, for example, or looking at any any other dog reference for example and look at the proportions first of all and then also at the differences in height when it comes to the when it comes to i guess the the volume or the structure um that is just something that you develop as you create more sculpts to give you something i guess more concrete I think what you can try is what I what I said before. Try to now that you've created one that is pretty, I guess, soft or shallow, you could say. Try to create one that is very, very. Try to see which the deep and high spots are, or the the protrusions and cavities, and try to very, very much, I guess, give them. Maybe highlight those more than they need to be. So make the deep spots very, very deep, make the make the um, high spots very, very high, just to kind of get a feel of um, how much you can work with the sculpt and how the sculpt tools like work. You said this is the first sculpt that you've ever made. So, you know, <laughs> the more you do, the more sculpts you do, the the more you're going to improve, of course, especially in the beginning, it's going to feel like you're going to improve you're like super, super, like, like so much in the beginning, especially. Um, so, you know, this one, comparing this one to maybe your fifth one will look way, way different. Um, try to really dig deep into the sculpt and add a lot to the protruding areas. I think that can help a lot when you, when you sculpt stuff like this. We have 10 minutes, so I have the idea because we only have an image. We could maybe sort of, um, actually do like a, I guess, a presentation is the word is not the right word a um <clears throat> demonstration of what i mean or how you could do it so let's just look at the eye okay or yeah let's look at the eye what i like to use as tools of course is the crease brush i mean the the um clay strips brush which looks like this and then the crease brush to create sharper edges basically I don't really need anything else to create the first, I guess, version of the sculpt. Because what I basically only do is I like go in here, I go into the the sphere, into the, I guess, sculpt, and I use my crease brush either to remove volume or to add volume. There you go. And we immediately have some sort of eyes, for example. We can then kind of ease it a little bit. We can maybe even add some cheekbones here. And I only really use the crease brush. I have a very, very strong strength on it. There you go. Sometimes I also use the grab brush to do some smaller adjustments, which are which are harder to do with the uh, with the um, what is it? Clay strips brush. And this way, you can very, very easily create like very, very deep spots. Very, very high spots right here, for example. And then we can create like a forehead right here. 
we can then create maybe a, a nose in the front. Of course, this will look weird, but here we have the, the nose. I'm not even using the... Um, this, I'm not even using the Snake or Crush right now. I'm just adding more volume to it. And you can see how I'm adding a lot, but even if I'm adding a lot, I can still remove it again with the opposite. I can just remove it again if I need to. So don't really... You know, like... I think what is um, what I sort of notice when you start sculpting is with a lot of people, they get scared using the brushes very, very strongly. They sort of stay very, very they, don't, they use them very lightly, which leads to these very, 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 I guess, they lose a lot of depth that way. Um, just by, you know, letting loose and just adding or using these tools very, very strongly you can very, very quickly create, first of all, of course, a lot of depth and also structure in a scope very quickly. Even if the structure isn't right, you can still change it later. So now what we could do is we have a nose right now that we can add a jaw right here. How do we create a jaw? We can either add or we could remove. So we remove a little bit right here. There you go. And then we have a protrusion and then in contrast, a cavity. Um, we don't even need the smooth brush right here we're just going to continue working there you go we have the bridge right here if we want to show the bridge a little bit more give it more contrast we go and add some and then to give it even more contrast we can sharpen the edge here by removing some there you go maybe even make it flatter okay and then let's do the nose we don't even need the crease brush for this all we really need is the clay strips brush we keep the strength and we make the, the brush a little bit smaller and just add more volume here to create this sharp edge. And then we want to make this diamond shape so we can use the clay strips brush in the opposite way and just dig into the sculpt. There you go. We have the nose shape. We have the nose. <laughs> um, if you want to do the mouth, of course, we can also do that with the clay strips brush. Just dig into the scope of course that comes with experience as well I'm not expecting you to do like these super super deep scopes immediately i think that just comes with experience and doing it more and more and more kind of getting used to the tools and also to the overall workflow but the more you do it the more you first of all learn how to analyze references and how to use the sculpt tools then we have somewhat of a dog. <laughs> of course, it looks very rough. So if you wanted to, we could also smooth it a little bit. Um, but what I always like to say is stay away from the smooth tool in the beginning. The smooth tool can be your enemy in the beginning. <laughs> Why? Basically, because it likes to remove the, uh, the detail that you've just added or the depth. So if I want to smooth this cheekbone for example i can do it but then you can see oh it's gone it's completely gone <laughs> um so i usually especially in the beginning if you want to work on the on your sculpt depth um maybe use the smooth brush very sparingly so maybe for these very sharp edges here maybe just tab them don't use it very broadly like over here just apply it more and more and more that just removes too much i guess yeah depth only really use them in some very distinct, distinct areas. Maybe here, for example, we have the nose right there. So if you would compare what I just did there to what you could also do or how you could also use the smooth brush, um, what we could also do is, well, we want to make this smoother. So why don't we just do this? I guess that works too. But what we just did is we lost contrast here. What we can also do is we can leave the edge out and just smooth around the edge so we can keep the edge while still smoothing everything else. There you go. We can maybe even do the same for the nose. Cheekbone too, to keep, to keep the depth, we just smooth that part here in the middle. There you go. And then we can use the grab brush to move things around. Still looks weird, but this is just a demonstration. Okay. Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. So.
So don't be afraid to use your use your tools with high strength. Maybe even force yourself to work with one strength on the clay strips brush. And then we're going to add some ears. Also pretty simple. We can even just fill this. Just add it, add it, add it. You can see it, how it how it stacks up down there. It's higher and higher and higher. I think I have even... Do I have accumulate enabled? So we have ears. Give them some structure. This very distinct V shape. And then we're going to dig in to create the ear shape. There you go. Yeah, don't be afraid to really use strong tools, basically. Maybe the grab brush doesn't necessarily need to be strong. I usually use 2.4 or 0.3. Um, but even the crease brush can be strong. The crease brush you need to be careful with because it, on one, it's very, very strong. So if you don't have a uh, tablet, it might be too strong. Um, but this one's also very good to just dig into a sculpt. Like that. See how deep it is? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I guess just, you know, practice and um, do some more sculpts with reference to learn, I guess, um, to learn how to analyze images and how you can see the 3D volumes in any image by looking at the shadows and highlights and then how you can bring those into the scope by uh, using very strong especially in the beginning uh, of your sculpt using very strong tools to really shape the structure <clears throat> and don't be discouraged if um if it doesn't look good uh the next time cre you create a sculpt <laughs> it takes a while okay Slowly but surely, you're, you're going to get there. Okay. We don't need this. Get rid of it. Okay. <clears throat> that is uh, shorty. Let's go to number seven. Passion. Passion gave us a blend file. And there were some instructions we we're supposed to follow. Which is, hold on. Didn't back the texture, so we should change the shading. Okay. Oh no, Zach. When did you... 8.45 p.m. Okay, we might be able to look at that in the end, okay? You made all of this? Okay. Okay. Let's begin. With passion. Let me sit down real quick and then we can continue or begin. Just for the next time, um, I'm, I'm going to include Zach in this one too. But if you submit after we we started, I'm going to push it into the next feedback session. Just because um, now that we now I'm going to you know make a two week pause, I'm going to include it so you know it doesn't take ages to put to give feedback on on it. But if you submit after we started, um, then I'm going to move it to the uh, to the next week okay or the next feedback session so two weeks actually you have to week you have to wait two weeks okay wait there you go okay it seems like there is supposed to be a render it seems like that's the case it seems like we don't have a oh 
There it is. The what's not included? Lag. There it is. Do we have multiple materials here? Oh, there it is. Right? Where's your image texture? <laughs> Hold on. Vodka bottle? Nope. Ah, uh, hold on. A jaw, okay. Here it is. Okay. I guess it's the works. Yeah, I guess it's the works. Okay. Okay. Let's look at it. First of all, first question that I have, what is this? I guess it's a Voronoid image it is okay Voronoid texture i mean interesting okay let's focus on the character okay <laughs> first of all wait rendered view okay um so now that we've created that you've created a rendered character let's look at the render too um so what can you improve in your render first of all let's look at the camera view okay um i think we have the same case here that we had before that is contrast we're using eevee so that's good because we can do changes in real life uh, real time if you go to color management you can see we can do some changes here we can for example inc increase the exposure the gamma if you wanted to or we can just use a look why don't we use a high contrast look you can see it immediately changes the image of course we can we get deeper dark spots we get brighter i guess white spots it is still pretty um pretty shallow let's say so what we could also do is change the gamma and then increase the exposure that doesn't change too much either so the best way to increase the contrast of course is to change the Wait, what, what was Gamma at the beginning? I can't remember. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, the best way to increase the... Contrast is by... Changing the lights. So, let's begin. <clears throat> So it seems like you have three lights. You have one in the back. You have one right here. And you have one right here. Oh, you also have one right there. I guess that's the sunlight. <clears throat> Generally speaking, I think sunlight mm, might not be the best light to use for... Is that a... No, that's a spotlight, right? No, sunlight. Okay. So you use a sunlight to light up the character... That to, to, to light up the character mostly and then you use other lights to give it I guess more character or more contrast you could say <clears throat> um, a sunlight the thing with a sunlight is that it creates very very sharp shadows you can change that by changing the um, angle if you increase the angle you can see the can you actually see that it's hard to see the angle I think should change the um, the sharpness of the shadows. Let me see if I can adjust the. Of course, you can also increase bloom if you wanted to. But screen screen space reflections and add those, so we get some nice shiny areas. Look at that. We can also refraction too. I don't know if that's in this image. What we could also do is we could change the shadows. We can make the cube size a little bit smaller, maybe to 128, 128, so that the shadows have more resolution. High bit depth too, to make them, well, give them higher bit depth. <clears throat> we don't, we don't want to bake anything. I think that's basically everything. Okay, we can see the shadows have a little bit more, you could say, um, depth now, or they're softer. But they also, well, you can see they're a little bit lighter now too. I think we can change that if we go to the light settings. 
shadow is on. Okay, contact shadows. Now we get the contact shadows back. You can see here. Now we have the shadows back without width. That's good. We can do that for all the lights. That's exactly why I don't like Eevee, because you have to do that every time you want to add a new light. And then you can fine tune them again. And blah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So that, that, those are a few things that you could do for the EV settings, maybe to, I guess, improve the look if you wanted to. Maybe you wanted it to look that way, so maybe I just destroyed your image. I'm sorry if that's the case, um, but let's continue like this. Um, let's increase the contrast. So now that we have the sunlight, we could increase the strength. Um, the thing is, it makes the entire, of course, um, face brighter. I don't necessarily, or I don't generally use sunlights. Maybe in this case it works. What I like to use more is a point light or a, an area light, just because with these two, you can more easily change the light, I guess, rotation. With the sunlight, you always have to rotate it like this to create different um, lighting or shadow position, you could say. But what you could also do is you could use a, um, a point light and then put that somewhere over here maybe even if she increase the power to 100 just to kind of show it there you go and then just by moving it you can change the shadow i guess structure so what you could say is hey i want to have some more depth in the eyes so i'm going to move this light a little bit further over here so now the eyes are a little bit darker I think it I, I it just feels like the sunlight doing that with the sunlight is a little bit harder to do. <clears throat> um let's actually go through the lighting from scratch and see if we can compare it afterwards. Um so we have the light here. Let's make a new one, a new collection. Call that light camera version two. Let's put these at one and two. Oh wait, that doesn't work. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. We still need the camera. Do we? No, we don't. Okay. So first of all, what I, how I like to light my stuff is I like to begin with one light at a time. Do we have word lighting? We do. If you want to make very, very, very sharp shadows, one thing you need to change is the world lighting. World lighting gives it an inherent, I guess, brightness. So if you bring this to white, you can see everything is bright, even the shadows. If you bring it to dark, you can see everything is black. Well, the shadows are black. Um, if you bring it to black, you can create stronger contrast between the bright areas and the dark areas. So let's just put it to black. I don't necessarily like it to put it to 100% black, maybe something like a nice gray value like this. You could use black too. Um, and then we're going to add some lights. We're going to remove this first. Wait, where's that one coming from? Oh, okay. So we have nothing. Let's now add our lights. So the way that I like to light my characters is I like to begin with one light, either a point light or an area light. Let's begin with a point light. And I like to sort of define the focus point. <clears throat> also, of course, the sharpness of the shadow. So if we increase the radius right now, in Eevee it's not as easy to see than in, um, in cycles. So let's just leave that there maybe. So now we can use this light to kind of set a focus point in the image. What should be the focus point? I would say maybe the face and also maybe the jaw. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this so that there's maybe a highlight somewhere over here. Also maybe on the nose and maybe even on the lips. We should probably make it brighter. Let's set it to 150. Oh, a way to a way to show if you're overexposing the light or if you can still increase the light strength or power is you can go to the render settings 
And then in color management, there's a view transform false color. That tells you how bright an area is. If it's red, it means it's overexposed or it's white. If it's blue or I think black, it means there's no light. <clears throat> so right now you can see we have white areas on the hair. We have no and everything else is sort of in the middle. So if we now increase the um, the strength to 200, for example, you can see we get more red on on the model. If you set it to 500, even the forehead gets red. If we now switch this back to the um, real colors, that's what it looks like. I don't think it's necessarily bad to have white areas here because it's metal and it's reflecting the actual light. Um, so maybe this works quite well. It creates good depth in the face. Might be a little bit too much. Maybe let's set it to 400. There you go. And then let's place it in a way where the shadows create good depth in the face, but also we can highlight some areas in the face. So what I like to do is I like to sort of, of course, move it around and see how I can manipulate the shadows to give us good depth. One thing we could try is to move it so far over here so that we have this shadow right there next to the nose to kind of give it a nice contrast, maybe like that which also gives it a highlight right here. And then we have a highlight somewhere over here. So maybe like that. I think the metal isn't really reflecting too much just because of how glossy it is. So if we reduce the roughness, that could probably help. Okay, let's add in next, the next slide. The next slide is basically there to um, give the dark areas some, I guess, add some more mid-tone or mid-level areas. So where the, where it's not like one, like super bright, but it's also not super dark, like the mid area. We want to add some more, I guess, some more of this model into this region. What we can do is we can just grab this point line, we can duplicate it and we can set it to maybe 100, maybe even less. Just kind of light up one side of the face, for example. So we can place it maybe over here to give this area some more brightness without, without it, I mean with it. We could also move it to the other side to do it on this side, maybe even create a highlight right there. But now we can see this side is pretty bright and this one is also pretty bright. If we move this light to this side more, we can see we have a dark spot right there that might be a little bit more, that might create more depth, I guess, or more contrast. So we're going to leave it on this side. With this one, we can also now expose the lower area a little bit more without with it. See so yeah, how we can show the structure more now. Maybe we could add one more light on this side. And maybe even set this to a pretty bright 1000. We'll then bring it behind the character to still keep the um, the dark spots, but also create a contrast between the background and the character by adding a rim light. Welcome back, Palladium. Hope you enjoyed your Thursday, as you could see. We're working on giving feedback, I guess. <laughs> We're working on feedback. And this way, so this is the, I guess, version two. Let's compare the two. So we have ver version one, that's yours. And here we have version two. You can still probably improve this even more, um, but that's um, one thing you can try, you know? going through the workflow like this. Maybe you've done it that way, but I think you can still increase the contrast <clears throat> by just making the lights brighter. You can see the contrast here is way brighter, for example, than this one. You can look at the, look at the skin, for example. This one's pretty grayish. And then if we look at this one, it's way brighter.
We can maybe even combine them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now that we have the lighting out of the way, let's go to the next step. Do we have any wishes or any questions? Okay, nope. So I can choose what I want to critique. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Welcome back, Hustler. Hope you uh, had a great day too. Are you excited for Christmas? Or are you celebrating Christmas? Have you already hunted your pelican to to roast and on Christmas? <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm guessing this is supposed to be a more stylized character because of the hair and also the simplistic shapes like the um, the cables or the, the other shapes and the face overall and the eyebrows. Enjoy your stay at the Nogi Christmas special. I don't know if this is a Christmas special, but I guess. <laughs> um, so, one thing, of course, you could talk about is the amount of detail or the amount of, um, you could say, okay, well, because we can't really see the texture that is applied, I don't know what the, um, hold on, I think I know where you got this from, I'm pretty sure. So we can maybe sort of see what you're going for. Hold on. Okay, no brushed metal. Interesting. It should be in here, right? This one? Rusty, rust, metal. Maybe not. Okay, either way. Um, I think the, the structure... Or, hold on. I think what can help you here is the... Composition or the combination of the objects. I think what is sort of um, missing right now is... The objects are connected, but they're not interacting with each other. What I mean by that is, if we remove the hair real quick... You can see... They are... There. They are inside of each other okay <laughs> but they're not interacting with each other okay what i mean by that is, or how you can do that is, i'm going to show you right now if you go to the sculpt what you could do to make them interact with each other rather than just being next to each other or in each other is you can use the sculpt tools and once you've added all these things and you don't want to change anything anymore you can go in here, for example, with the crease brush and... Wait, what? What happened? Oh. Oh my god, hold on. <laughs> Wait, you can make the UI for different phase... I mean, different windows smaller? I thought you can only do that for the entirety of the... Of the UI. Okay, hold on. Where are we? What just happened? What are you using? Oh, stabilized stroke. There it is. How dense is your model? Should be that dense, right? Yeah, it's not that dense. Okay. So what you could try here is... Oh my, 200. Okay. You could just... Create a cr crease right here. Um, which makes it so that it looks like it's been pressed. or Well, the crease makes it so that they interact with each other. The metal is not part of the skin. So by creating this crease, it looks like it's been put into the skin. The skin needs to avoid or needs to move around the metal. And this way, well, because it needs to, it reacts to the metal, it basically interacts with it. So these two are now interacting with each other. The skin is moving around the metal. Um, how you can do that here, for example, is the same. You can just do the same here. 
creating creases to kind of you know make these pieces interact not just like clip through a thing that you could try here is maybe your rings so that these are more connected rather than just i guess intersecting for example mm, same here you can see here they just sort of clip together what you could try is maybe either create some bumps <laughs> create some bumps so that it looks like they sort of shove themselves underneath the skin like this pretty laggy my pc can't handle the resolution so they sort of shove themselves underneath the skin maybe just kind of come up with ideas how they can interact with, with each other basically like that um yeah i think those are the those are things that you can try to make it look more uh i guess coherent what did i do <laughs> what something your your oh there it is okay your file is cursed <laughs> Okay, and then it looks something like this. See how it now interacts with the with the metal. It interacts with the um, interacts right here. It's sort of digging itself underneath the skin. That's stuff that you can add to kind of interact, make the different pieces, especially like the metal is not part of the skin. You know, it's not part of the body, so it needs to interact somehow. So it, for example, digs underneath the skin, or it just kind of is sort of pushed. Like, I guess, into the skin. These ways, you can make them interact with each other and make them look more um, realistic or more coherent, basically. Eggnog. <laughs> I don't drink eggnog, okay? I don't know what it... Well, I know what it tastes or at least smells like. And that's all I need to know. Okay. Yeah, hope these tips help. We focus a little bit more on lighting today. Um in multiple of these images but i guess next time we didn't need to do that anymore okay <laughs> eve or maybe we you know if we have to we're gonna do it okay last one okay um so if you want to you know if you want to well if you want to get more feedback on i guess the uh the jaw or the scoped then you can specify that in your um in your post Let's call that post. Okay. Number eight. Let's go to the last one. Posted by Zach. He posted two. Uh, the blend one file is basically the backup file. So the way Blender creates the backup file is first of all in a temporary folder that is somewhere else. But it also creates one that is called the blend one file. The reason why it's called the blend one file is because this way you can um, you can co create the same file in the same folder, but by change by adding the one at the end, you're gonna distinguish them from each other, and you're also gonna change the file. I guess um, I guess the file not version, but type um which makes the one one unreadable and if your first one crashes what you can do or your first one is corrupted what you can do is you can rename the blend one file to blend to remove the one and then you basically have a copy or a duplicate of your blend file um that you can use to recover your file for example so that's why the blend one file exists some other programs like InDesign, for example, create a temporary secondary file. Um, but Blender doesn't do that. Okay. Uh, there it is. Aha. Nice. Okay. Oh no, we're using lights again. <laughs> Hold on. 
I included the two just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I mentioned it. If you're using Blender now, I can see it being weird that there are two files. Okay, let me set this up real quick and then we can begin. Well, actually, okay. So I guess we want to focus on the uh, the sculpt more rather than the the lighting. Let's just see what it looks like in rendered view. Are you using EV or not? Wait, oh, you're using UVs? UV project, interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. Spooky. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to denoise your image, I think this one right now, denoise and then open image, open image denoise with these settings is probably the best one right now. That's the that's the one that they recently improved with 3.0. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let's go in, into it. Uh okay, let's let's focus on the the sculpt. Um let's go into sculpt mode. There you go. Wait. So I myself don't like to use smooth shading when I sculpt just because this way I can see the um, the geometry better it seems like uh, this one's already retopologized so it seems like you use a base mesh for this hide all the lines okay there you go so it seems like you've already you use a uh, Read apologize mesh. Mostly forms, what do you mean? Um Yeah, so it seems like you have a lot of geometry here. We you don't have too much on the other uh areas. Trying to different stuff in Blender. Okay. Um okay. Let's go into sculpting. So, <clears throat> the thing is, generally, of course, you would you would want more geometry for the um, for the mouth, for example, because you want to have more detail in the lips, for example. Um, the problem is if the contrast or the difference between the mouth and the the cheeks, for example, is this strong or this high. Um, the problem that you can run into is when you then want to create a like you want to go more more into detail with the sculpt and you add a multi-resolution modifier and you subdivide it you will have an immense amount of resolution for the lips um, but to get enough detail into the cheeks you would have to add more maybe like one or two more to really get sufficient geometry here the thing is now you might be have like 600k right here but the lips are already at, at like 1.2 million. <laughs> so I think having a somewhat somewhat equal amount of geometry overall over your face um, is probably, I guess, a little bit more usable. Um, doesn't mean that, you know, you can't use this. It just doesn't mean, it just means that you could, you, you might run into some problems. Okay, let's look at the uh, the face. Uh, we're in sculpting, perfect. Okay, so we don't really need more resolution. Okay, so let's look at the face. <clears throat> One thing I notice is the lips have depth. Not necessarily because, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, so you actually left them open. Um, I guess that's the way, that's one way to do it too. I think we can still increase the depth for the ellipse though. Um, the thing with ellipses that they not only go deep into, well, they transition into the mouth, but they also um, have a pretty sharp corner or a pretty sharp edge up here and a pretty sharp edge down here. Um, so we could in include those here. We have an edge right here. Wait. 
for settings binge point two five. So we have a pretty much defined edge right here for the lip up top topper uh, topper lip upper lip <laughs> and then we have one the lower lip is also defined or more sh like sharper the edge down here um but only really right here in the middle the reason for that is because the muscles that you've also included which i like um these muscles here oh my god oh okay so you use radius what is it um strength radius so the, the more you apply pressure to the pad the graphic tablet the bigger the rush the bigger the brush size is i don't personally like to use that i think i said that a lot now um just because i like to see the cursor and like to adjust my cursor and know that when i adjust my cursor to this size that the brush is going to be this size it's sort of into unintuitive for me to work with like this size for a cursor and then just have a smaller brush size so I kind of have to see, okay, the brush, the cursor is that big, but when I apply that much pressure, I need to, uh, the cursor is that big. I just like to see, okay, the cursor is that big, the brush is going to be that big. So I generally don't use the radius. But if you, if if it's intuitive for you, then you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna judge. <laughs> um. So yeah. What we have generally is we have these muscles here, right here that slightly smooth out the the lips because the um they create volume so what we have here is we have a inwards facing volume like this so it's a c shape that's pointing inwards but be but because the the muscles are right here they create an outwards facing volume see how it's outwards facing this way we can this edge right here gets smoothed out a little bit these muscles also create the structure or the yeah the structure of the lips they move from out here into the middle and then meet in the middle basically which means that for the upper lip i mean for the lower lip you have two sort of balls right here to create the volume and then you have a sort of empty spot in the middle like a crease for example you can often oftentimes see a crease for the lips right here so it looks like this for the upper lip it's a little bit different for the upper lip you have multiple i guess well for the lower lip you probably have more too but for the upper lip you have one muscle that comes from here one muscle that comes from there and i think one more right here and they all sort of meet uh right here somewhere over here but then the muscle for the mouth is like this round muscle that goes all all around the mouth. I always press the wrong button. Um, and there's this weird like intersection right here. Or this weird muscle area that sort of creates like this bulging effect. And the bulging effect is very visible right here. So we have this sort of middle piece here. So we have three pieces for the top lip. One right here or two right there, and then one in the middle. And then we have two at the bottom created by these two muscles. Okay. Um, another thing. Um, what, what oftentimes, what you can do oftentimes is you can draw a line from the nose tip to the chin and the lips oftentimes are on that line. <clears throat> also, the um, corner of the mouth is oftentimes on the height of the end of the nose. So basically, on this level, if you draw down, that would be the mouth, the corner, the mouth corner position. Let's look at some references for that. Um, face profile. Profiki. <laughs> so for this dude, for example, we can see we have the nose right here. The nostril ends right there. And the corner of the mouth is a little bit further back than the nostril. A little bit, not too much. Almost on the same level. If you look at uh, him, 
the nose ends right there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the nose, hold on, that's the first one that we looked at. See, there's the end of the nose, the end of the lip for him. End of the nose, end of the lip for her. End of the nose, end of the lip. So hers is a little bit further back for her. The same, we have a slight diagonal here too. The profile, what do you mean? Uh, which means if we compare that to this one, we can see if you go down, here's the beginning of the lip. <laughs> so we can pretty much bring this up quite far. I think the nose is in a better position than the lips right now. So let's bring the lips forward. I'm actually going to mask them so we don't move too much. Maybe we can even include the chin. Okay, invert, grab, move it forward. Okay, looks weird. Let's adjust it. There you go. Another thing is Right now you can see we have this diagonal like this. Generally speaking, you either have like a C shape or it's in the diagonal is going in the other direction. So what we have to do is we move this part of the nose further forward. If you want to look at some reference for that, you can see it here. This one's diagonal outwards. This one's actually straight down. We can't really see it here. This one's diagonal, slightly diagonal outwards. Here it's straight down. Almost straight down. Straight or C. Well, this is a drawing. <laughs> yeah, so it's always, it's always sort of outwards facing from the lip to the nose. Um, the lips might also be quite low. I don't really have a good rule for mouth placement. The only one that I know is that the... No, that doesn't really make sense. So <laughs> I guess I just have a hunch to move it a little bit higher. To give the chin some more room. Okay. There you go. I just want to give this some more here too. We can maybe even make the define the jaw a little bit more. By just pulling this back there you go okay so we've adjusted the lips we've put, pulled pulled them forward a little bit so now they're more on the line right there <clears throat> um i would so if you want to have eyes that you can use everywhere, I think the best tutorial for that to just do it once and then be done with it um, is the one by CG Cookie. Cookie. Um, I. I think it's this one. That's where I got my eye from. That's where I got my eye from. He goes through the entire process of creating the eyeball all the way to the end until you have the finished eyeball. Um, one notice, one thing I need, I need to notice though is it he he creates it procedural. Once you rotate the eye, the eye will will change. So what you have to do is you have to bake the colors. Um, I don't want to explain that right now. <laughs> well, it's not too hard. Yeah. Yeah. So you know you can just look up how to bake procedural textures and that should help you. 
Um, so if you want to have, you know, good looking eyes, you can do that, for example. Okay. Um, one thing that I notice is the, we have the two important lines for the eyes. We have one going from the edge of the nostril here upwards to go to the corner of the eye. Um, it seems like it's almost there or it might be there. The thing is the tear duct is very, very big. The one thing we can do is we can move it further over here to make the tear duct smaller. The tear duct overall is pretty small in humans. Did I? Oh, well, let's look at an eye. There you go. You can see how small it is. Well, here you go. Uh, this one is a little bit longer, but still not as long. Maybe it's the distance here for the tear duct is as long as the black part here, the hole of the iris all the way to the edge, somewhere around that. So I think that's pretty good. The shape, of course, should be like an almond. Of course, you could say, well, that's an almond. Um, I guess I agree, <laughs> but I think we can adjust it a little bit. One thing to note, okay, one thing to uh, keep in mind is to always keep the eyelids close to the um, to the eyeball, so they're supposed to cover them. So we need to move them back. There you go. That might be a little bit too deep. We should probably also move the eyeballs, but I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> Um, I like that you've added the um, the smaller medium details too, like the eye, the um, eye, dude, it's too late. <laughs> the um, whatever it is, you know, the, the 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 thing underneath the eye here. Same with this one, the the fan right there. I like that one. And then here the the muscle too. One thing you can consider is distinguishing the horns from the skin a little bit more. This way you can sort of sell the look that they're sort of coming out of the skin, but they're not part of the skin. Oftentimes with horns, what you're trying to say or what you're trying to show or horns are made out of bone or some sort of hard material, which doesn't really come from the skin. So generally they come from underneath the skin. So they have to have a distinct, I guess, separation from the skin so you're adding like a crease for example can help with that <clears throat> also you have a muscle that goes from the ear to the to this area here to the bone that is right here there you, are, there you go so this area gets filled by that muscle the muscle is actually pretty big and it basically makes this area pretty flat so what we can do here is we can just kind of fill this area a little bit so that it's not caving in but it's more straight like that. Then maybe the the ears. Uh, I think the head overall is a little bit too wide. Overall, the widest part of the head is behind the ears. Right now, it seems like the widest part is on the ear. That could just be the ear position overall. Um, but I guess that. The position is pretty okay. There you go. Okay, I think that's all the time that we have for this one, unfortunately. <laughs> but let's compare this one to the um, original. What is it gonna... What is... Is it just called cube? Oh no. Okay, let's see if I can find it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna save this as a new version. Version 2. And then I'm going to append the old one. Okay, let me just do this. What is it called? View. There it is. Let's do our little trick here. Collection 2, collection 3. 1, 2... Oh, not one. There you go. We use the first one. 
put it in two. That's the, the second one. Wait, that's the first one. Okay. There you go. And then we have this one. Here's our base. Okay. Oh. Okay, we need the eyes in here as well as in here. Okay, perfect. So this is um hold on the number one so that's yours the original let's make it um flat just so we have a better comparison so this is a uh, number one and this is number two i think the profile view changed more than the uh the side view you can change you can see the change especially in the mouth how much further you can put the mouth forward and how much that changes the profile. And then the side view, I mean the front view a little bit too. We kind of rounded the, the skull up top here and moved the lips a little bit higher and also defined the shape a little bit more. Yep. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, but that concludes all of them. <clears throat> Hope those tips were helpful. Um, thank you for submitting, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope those tips were helpful. This concludes this year's streams. <laughs> um, the next stream will be on the 3rd of January, so the first Monday of next year. Um, until then, you're probably going to see at least two new, two more videos uh, from me on the main channel. I hope you enjoyed today's stream, and hope you will enjoy the uh, last few the last two weeks of this year. And um, maybe I'll see you next year. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day too. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, chatting, or just being here. Being here. Um, maybe I'll see you next time. And until then, take care. <laughs>